Thank you for your patience, everyone. We're settling some technical issues here. Um, it is 705. We're going to start the planning and zoning meeting. And uh, before we do so, I have an announcement. Uh, I'll just read from the script. Good evening. I'm Diane Dorsey, uh, Vice Chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission. This meeting may be attended in person or by remote video or telephone conference. No conference access information was provided for the commission members, applicants, and other interested persons to participate and noticed on the agenda posted on the town website. For all those attending, I would ask that you meet, mute yourselves if you are able to so that we don't get any background noise. Uh, I have two very important reminders. First, every time you speak, please state your name and title for the record. Second, we must be careful not to speak over one another so that everyone who's listening can hear what's being said and we have a clear record. For this reason, as necessary, when it comes time for the commission members to comment and ask questions about a particular agenda item before any action is taken and then to vote on that agenda item, our planner, Marnie Juicy, will call the roll as needed. Also, the regular meeting is being recorded and the recording will be posted on the town's website. I'm now going to ask that Maureen take attendance by calling the roll. Thank you. Um, Commissioner John Michael O'Brien, Pat Henry, Acting Chairman Dorsey, here. Um, Commissioner Zigmar, here. Commissioner Rogan, here. Hey, Commissioner uh, Commissioner Coppola, here. Commissioner Hamill, do not be here at this time. <coughs> Chairman Dealey. Here. <clears throat> and thank you, Diane, for taking the chair today. You're very welcome, Jeff. I hope you feel better. I hope well, so too. Zaragoza asked to be excused this evening. Alternate um, Lake Manny. And I'm here. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is review of minutes. Um, I'm not certain that we have everybody here for a vote. Um, we've had some varying attendance. Great. Um, Madam Chair, if I may, I think we may have enough to proceed with the minutes. I'm sorry, John. I think we may have enough to proceed with the minutes. Okay. So in um, that case. Go ahead, John. Uh, I was going to make a motion to accept the min minutes for April 21st, 2022 as been submitted. Second. Uh, motion made by Chairman Bealey, seconded by uh, Commissioner Zickman. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Steve? Steve Bayola? Aye. Sorry. Aye. And aye. <laughs> uh, next on the agenda is approval of minutes for the May 5th, 2022 meeting. Oh, Madam. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, can I make a motion then to uh, approve the minutes for May 5th, 2022? You may. Is there a second? Second. A motion by Chairman Bealey and seconded by Commissioner Coppola to accept the May 5th, May 5th minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, Tim abstains. Request for bond releases. Requested Stephen Delfino for a bond release, 45 Hemlock Ridge. And uh, there was some information in our packet on this. Maureen, is there any other information? Um, yes, we have some other information actually. It's just um, noting though, however, um, I believe you'll be seating the app in place of 
So, um, for the record, Stephen Fiala, you'll be seated for the entirety of the meeting. Okay, thank you. So, um, as far as the bonding goes for Delfino, um, the staff does have some concerns about releasing that bond. The bonding is for sewer hookup at what was the existing house at 45, number 45. Um, at the time, another lot was split off of it by subdivision, subdivision bond. And as I understand it from um, the record, the reserve field was split for that lot. So therefore, they no longer had a reserve field and therefore needed to, they were compelled to hook up to public sewer. They have hooked up to public water, but not public sewer, is my understanding. And um, because of that, and I believe there may be new owners of the property now, there may be some complications with regard to using the bond, getting it hooked up, et cetera, but the bond is for that. I will need to get some legal uh, advice on <coughs> the process in which to uh, get that subdivision criteria uh, condition carried out. <coughs> can, I, so, can I speak on my behalf? Make a motion to deny this uh, bond request. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Can I yeah. speak on my behalf? Uh, yeah, it isn't a public hearing. It's, okay, so how do how do I respond to that? You would need to work through staff. Okay, so uh, how would I go about doing that? Just wait, call them later on. Um, yes, or um, during business hours in the office. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's, okay, so I'll do that um, some other time. Days. Next few days? Yep. All right, thank you very much. Thank Have a good you. night yes. out. Be well, thank, thank you. you. Um, okay, so um, there's a motion to deny by Commissioner Zygmunt. Is there a second? I'll make a second. Seconded by Chairman Bailey. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 And I, uh, so it carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda under new business. Um, and uh, for the record, we're adding an additional item under new business tonight. Uh, item C, Newport Realty, discussion for an outside cooler at 9 Steel Boulevard. So uh, that will be under new business. Uh, first item is site, site plan amendment application of ORI for an installed outside material and equipment storage area with lot line revision. Quantum of Berlin 2 LLC property owner. I see we have somebody here. I don't see under new business. Yes, please start. Good evening. My name is John Wagable. I'm a principal of the LRC Group. My business is address is 160 West Street, Suite E, Cromwell, Connecticut. I'm here this evening with the applicant and owner of the property, uh, William Coons Jr. We are here to present and discuss an application for site plan amendment for the site improvements of the subject property 504 run, <coughs> excuse me, four run road. The property is a 15 acre parcel located in the west side a four ride road um, and just north of Norton Road and is um, located in a planned industrial zoning district. This parcel has been subdivided in the past and um, we have been here 2008, I believe we represented some site improvements and I believe since then um, the parcel has been uh, further subdivided and another parcel or another uh, business was um, cut out from that. <clears throat> um, we're here uh, to, dis like to, to discuss the site modifications and improvements and a lot line readjustment to better suit the needs of the property. Please, fine. Uh, this one, the uh, 
colored presentation. I, I did some. Right, you sent that today, right? Yeah. I thought it was a folder. You can start and I'll sure. up there. The modification improvements that we are seeking to have approved would be one, a I would call it a lay down area that actually has been constructed already. Um, and I know the staff is aware of this. It's located in the southeast corner of the property. Can you point to this, yeah, right in that area. Again, that's a laid out area that was constructed. Um, we're here actually to get that approved this evening. Um, there's it's made with um, it was cut into the side of the hill. <clears throat> the hill actually slopes um, from uh, Four Ride Road, it actually slopes up and then slopes down again. And a <clears throat> Blocks were installed to create a flat area for, um, like I said, a lay down area for storage and um, equipment for um, that's uh, one of the uh, tenants of the uh, property. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a private. If you don't mind, that'll give us a perfect opportunity when I share the screen. This is also back to my computer. I'm sorry, we just got this computer today. So let me test. Uh, But the video defaulted to my video. Sorry for me keep talking. Yeah, about yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to share with those people online and, and these screens. Are you guys still seeing the shared screen? Um, yeah, more. Yeah, Maureen, we see the shared screen, but um, uh, it's the colored uh, one that you have there with uh, the greens and the mustards and the whatever. So I'm not sure which diagram we're supposed to be looking at. The one with the color. Okay. Uh, All right. What I lost was the camera for the room. Oh. Well, that's all right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. No, um, yeah. no worries. There are some storage areas um, along the south side of the building. Okay, Maureen, can you show us where that south side of the building is? I'm so used to you um, moving the mouse around. And okay, terrific. This way, I don't have to go to the plans. All right, great. So, uh, some metal contain uh, storage containers. Yep, right along the property, the southerly property line. <clears throat> and we're proposing some parking enhancements, uh, which will lead to a paving program that the owner is looking to do. And the first, the, the paving area that they're looking to do this year um, is area that's kind of the look of the lighter gray, you can point to that. Yep. It's all on the, the, well, it would be the east side and a portion of the northeast portion of the, um, of the property. And also expand and improve a little bit of, of parking. From the, from the northeast corner, there's a, there's a sidewalk coming up in the building. And there's that's all proposed parking in, in there with a sidewalk. And along the east property line, uh, there's yeah, that's there's parking there now. We're looking to square it up and um, make it uh, a little bit more attractive to curb and 
painted. Actually, there's no painting um, parking spots there, and then um, include painting or uh, painted parking spots. <clears throat> Based on the use of the building, we calculated there's three required 310 parking spaces based on office use, manufacturing, and storage. And there's a combination of those that parking, excuse me, parking throughout the, um, the property um, by utilizing the, the pavement and the um, gravel areas that are um, on the north, the northwest side, the west side, and along the south. There is a parking plan. Maybe I can come back to that. Um, it'll be easier. Can we write such things? Uh, no, actually, we can come back to that. And um, there's some proposed fencing to close in that laid out area. Uh, go up a little bit more. Uh, go up to the top a little bit more. Uh, right there, I believe it goes across there, the right. Yeah, you just go to the right and then it'll drop down to the north side of that. That brownish color. Actually, you see, you see those parking spots. There's like four parking. Spots. Yeah, it's the the fence is just on the east side of that. It goes straight across to the property line to the south. And then where your cursor is, it drops down to uh, I got it. and close. Yes, that area in there. Yep. Uh, some landscaping enhancement. We are proposing to plant five pine trees, white pine trees, and those are those five right to the, to the north side of the darker brown area. And you can um, pan out a little bit. They're um, proposing 13 pear trees scattered along that vacant lot. Some spruce trees within the park. Um, if you go to that area where the parking is proposed, you have those three, three spruce trees in there. <clears throat> and um, shrubs will include uh, summer sweet, winter bearing, and dogwood. Those are right along the north, or the north side of the parking. And these were um, pan to the right. Uh, I can hand it down a little bit. Oops. It's that green. It's kind of. Yeah, right, right along the north edge of the parking in there. That was um, plantings that were actually part of the 2008 approval that um, were never done. So we're including them here to, so it will be to complete that um, 2008 application. And lastly, we're proposing a lot line modification. We go to First one. Uh, the parcel was actually made up of two individual lots that were subdivided back in 2008 and then further resubdivided. Um, at a later date for that parcel or for the, the business that's right on the right hand entrance, I believe it's a sheet metal. And what we're looking to do is modify the lot area of 500 and the that front vacant lot. The front vacant lot 
uh, is currently 4.48 acres. After the modification, we'll drop down to 3.023 acres. 504 Rod Road is currently 15.31 acres. And the new lot area would be 16.77 acres after the modification. And the bulk requirements for 504 Rod will improve slightly, where they are currently now under the maximum percentages for the um, uh, for coverage and for um, impervious coverage and building coverage for this um, district. Basically, what we're doing, we're kind of the that front lot is kind of odd shaped, and we're just going we're we're smoothing it out, and also including taking some land about 1.25 acres um, to cover the that lay down area, so that will uh, stay a, a part of. Uh, 504 rod. That area that has that cross hatch would be going from the front lot to 500. And then go to the, yeah, that area, that area right there um, is going from the front lot to 500. And then there's oh, the other way. Oh, yes. <coughs> my lot lines backwards there. That area is going from 500 to the front lot. And then if you go to the right, just a little bit that area up in there, and plus that finger that goes um, to the west of sheet building, that's going from the uh, front lot to 500. Can you go through this possibly the second or third sheet that shows the parking? Yes. <clears throat> this plan shows a lot of the, the parking um, to meet the uh, zoning requirements. Most of a lot of the areas on the on the west side and on the south side would be um, areas that wouldn't be marked up, but they can be areas that can be used because it, uh, it is a gravel parking area out, and it's planning on being a gravel parking area for another. Or you think it's going to and the. Northeast side and the east side will be all paved, and that will be all um, marked parking, painted parking areas. We have uh, received some staff, actually, we didn't have received any staff comments, but we did receive comments that they looked at it and they, were, they had no comments. And that would include the director of economic development, police chief, building, water, health. Fire Marshal and the Board of Police Commissioners. So, if you're ready for them, we, yes. um, we had several interdepartmental staff meetings with the applicant before they even made their submission um, in order to outline the process, uh, the appropriate process, which um, we determined is most lo most logical. A lot line revision. They're not creating a new map. They're not there are new lots. No new lots being created or anything else. But the two most recent subdivisions of this um, parcel are in pretty very recent history. So therefore, felt that the lot line revision should be reviewed by the Planning and Zoning Commission because you'd be familiar with the um, with the criteria and the concerns you may have had at that time. Back in 2008 and or 2019, when the um, so the front lot was taken off, was was divided out in 2008. The complete sheet metal lot was divided out in 2019. So, so fairly recent. There are cross easements that um, need to be secured and uh, filed in relation to any adjustments to make sure that um, the parking and drives off um, and. Utilities all remain in place and, and, and 
are adequately covered. There are notations on the plan sheets with relation to that. Those easements and that we have been discussed with staff that we're satisfied. Um, but noting that they do need to be reported um, if there's any modifications to what's already reported. Um, the just pointing out that this lot line, um, as Mr. Wagner just described, the lot line between the front lot and 500 Four Rand Road, which is what I'll call the manufacturing building lot, in there, the old manufacturing lot, um, was just reiterate that that was a very irregularly shaped lot. And as um, staff concurs that this and paving of the, the lot, new delineations um, and the striping will clean up the site, it will make it more organized and more logical. Um, the area to the back, and I'm glad Mr. Reichelbach actually clarified that this, the area in the back, um, is currently graveled all the way around as shown on the plan. However, um, and not striped and is used in a more random manner for vehicles, equipment, loading docks, et cetera. And therefore we would suggest it not be striped unless, unless needed or at the time that it is needed um, and in consultation with the planning and zoning department um, for review if necessary. Um, that the lay down area that they're proposing is the site plan change, really. You know, so that, that deals with the the lot line revision deals with the line itself. And then we have the parking and the new lay down area, which actually has already been substantially installed. There are retaining walls, etc. Any retaining walls over four feet in height that haven't obtained permits, which I would sign off on those permits. Um, because it wasn't an LA approved plan, um, but if any of them are would require building permits that plans be submitted for um, building and engineering review. Um, the wooded lot um, towards Four Rod Road, it is substantially old growth and the lay down area is substantially screened by that and the elevation change down to it. Uh, I would suggest that on the plan, they add the limit of clearing and any uh, changes to the site be brought in, in for staff to determine if review is necessary. That's it. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing the zoning summary table um, on sheet LLMP1 shows the new the front lot reduced the lot that's been reduced in size it has um, some writing on it that makes it appear as though currently it's not applicable and it just says it will meet the requirements for the in the chart it should be revised to show that there is currently no improvement for our record and is that everything we're in? Now, okay, thank you. Um, do any of the commissioners have any questions? I just have one, um, Diane, if I can. Um, yes, this is Commissioner can. Bailey. Um, they talked about an equipment storage area. And what was, the, where's that? I know we talked a lot about the line adjustment, but where's the equipment storage area? Okay, so that's where it is, Maureen, where your cursor is. This, this is the gravel area that is the newer improvement. They, and Mr. Wagenbach can correct me if I'm wrong, but all through here and mostly back here is where equipment storage is for the existing leases that are operating out of the property. Okay. Um, years ago. Is that what you refer to as equipment storage? Yeah, and I believe over on the right, the north and side this. too is interesting. Yeah, because I mean, the equipment storage. Yeah, right and area in there too. Where it was, built, it was just built. That's really the main spot. That area. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. No more questions. I will um, add that on the older plans, the parking along the northerly end of the lot was shown for eventual improvements if ever if necessary. Uh, I was there, I think it's our um, 
you know, there's a lot of uses that, um, that didn't really need the parking, the manufacturing. So why improve it with striping and, and um, pervious, the impervious surface if it wasn't necessary? So it had been marked on those old plants as strike when necessary. Um, but there was pavement areas such as delineated on here. This one is even extended a little bit more. Um, that I and staff agrees with should be as shown. Okay. And highlight still is there. Yes. Um, and so uh, has staff been out to the site um, as the improvements from the uh, previous uh, changes to the uh, plans have been made? So, so uh, when they first encroached into the front lot, um, what I'll call the easterly lot, we were out there and noted the fact that they had encroached in the last few weeks. This, this lovely disease mm -hmm. might have not been that out. Um, okay, uh, I was wondering if uh, there was satisfaction or dissatisfaction with the progress um, otherwise on those um, other changes to the property. So as of the last um, complaint with regard to the property and um, businesses that had not been approved um, and clearing that out, those, those complaints had all been satisfied. In the, in the past, the last one was probably over a year ago, and the wetland agent was also satisfied with that time, at least here. But. Okay, and it sounds though like um, maybe you need to still do some further review. So, if, uh, if is that accurate? I'm, I'm not feeling the need to, but if you would like me to put anything else more, no, I just for want you, I'd be glad to. But I just want to make sure you have time. They have. I, and I went through the old plans on uh, the last two subdivisions, and I'm familiar because of over the years, the number of um, use uh, reviews I have done for zoning purposes and complaints. I well, I just have one question, if you would please um, describe the fence of, along the lay down area. Um, you have a plan for what that's going to look like? It would be a chain link fence. With, um, I, because I believe there's uh, two 20 foot gates for vehicles to get at construction of the, the, the vehicles that are stored there. <clears throat> and actually, that area is pretty much screened from the room mm -hmm. as with the, the, um, with the woods that uh, Maureen just described. Mm -hmm. Um, any commissioners have questions, comments? Yes, I do. Uh, so the testimony here, some of this work has been done. These uh, containers here uh, uh, have been put in and uh, no building permits or anything for that been taken out. No, and I did miss my comment that said that they be um, relocated onto the site, which we know says they will be as well. So, so right now there's some violations out there that happen without the town knowing about uh, and no building permits for that. Um, I uh, I understood the the containers were not permanent. Um, okay. or rather were not regularly used. They were something that comes in and out with the um, with the jobs and materials. That's what I under, had understood. Uh, I would, I would encourage the applicant to respond to that. But the containers are there and, and worn on the last map. That's what I mean here. Uh, okay. They were not on the last map, sir. They weren't on the last map. And they're, they, they are loaded with equipment or brought to a job site. And then when the job is done, it's, they're brought back and stored there. Concrete block material storage area. That, that's the storage area on the south part of the building. Yes. Uh, so that conflict, conflict, uh, concrete block area built that wasn't on uh, 
previous plan or project, and there was no permits pulled for to build that structures. Okay. Uh, I have a problem uh, proving any uh, thing on a map that I have in front of me when there's violations on the on the property. Uh, and that everything doesn't comply to the plan previous to this. And now you're coming in for a new plan to do some other stuff. Uh, and I heard that the, the kind of testimony that the, the paving of the area for front here uh, with the front park places of the first map we have here, uh, second page actually, the second page, uh, that's proposed for this year, that paving. Yes. Okay. And there's no paving proposed for the rest of the area that required the 300 park places. We just planning on paving. Yeah, just, uh, just, uh, just the gray just area. The yes. planning on paving. Correct. Okay. So I know there's room for 300 park places. Uh, but there will not be 300 parking places strike designated as parking places uh, on the property. Uh, so on our third page, we have all uh, another 150, uh, 300, 250 parking places shown on the second, the third page uh, that basically won't be there. Our intent was just to show that. There's there's room available, right? Right. Yes. But with the way the, the the use of the property and with uh, tenants coming in and out, it's a lot of that area. Area they don't need the three hundred and spaces. They need mostly for for storage for their tenants you know, for the equipment that comes in and out almost every day. Okay. So my my thing is if you're not if you're not going to be using three hundred spaces, then we require three hundred spaces. Uh, through our zoning thing, then probably the, you know, the way you use the building, maybe there should be a, a waiver asked for of the park places and designate this is going to be equipment storage areas or whatever. Uh, right now we have it will be filed with a map that has 300 park places on it, uh, which will not be existing. Uh, so uh, that that compliance is not there uh, right now, and the compliance is not there for the structures that have been built. Uh, and I also asked about asking about uh, existing gravel area landing area. Is that all the top of the landing area? Landing what? Right down here, the existing landing area. So did we have a helicopter pad on? No, that's the laid out area. Landing. That's the rig. Okay. I'm just reading what it okay. says. Okay. So I just don't know the helicopter landing pad. But we do have it actually should say like lay down here. Okay, because we have we have manufacturing buildings that have a helicopter pad on their property. And with saying that, that's that's wrong on the map. I just see corrections that have to be put on this map before I can approve it. Uh, and permits for structures that have to happen. I mean, I'm happy for the business to be improving. I was happy to see the sheet metal place come in. I'm seeing the improvements on this. Uh, I do have one fallen uh, thing in my mind years ago on this property. There was a lot of hazardous waste on this property. Uh, especially in the south portion of the building was a big painting booth in there with a huge fire in there. And firemen got sick and taken to the hospital and decontaminated and stuff. And I want to make sure that that stuff is out of that building or secured properly. Because this is time that I, I, you know, with the farm and they got hurt back then. 
sorry, I was one of them, uh, is a concern. So uh, I'm just, uh, you know, without those things and what the, the uh, staff has told us uh, that not on the map is on the map. Uh, I think those corrections should be made before they are approved and filed. So I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to approve them once all the maps, the maps correct. Uh, so that's my opinion. I was just told that uh, there is no hazardous waste in that area. Okay. The booth had to be decommissioned, but sir, you need to identify yourself if you're going to offer um, testimony directly, please. Yeah. And make sure you speak into the microphone, please. My name is Bill Coons. I live in uh, West Hartford, Connecticut. I'm the owner of the building. Um, the intellect building originally owned this property that had to be paint booth. When we bought it, it had to be like fully decommissioned, so they took it apart. There was nothing left in that building and no hazardous waste, according to the environmental studies in that area. Okay, okay. then that was direct, uh, directed, uh, corrected, and uh, I problem. Uh, just, but uh, I know it was on the property. Uh, the news for that. Plant pots made clay, clay factory before, so all that stuff. Uh, building been used for a lot of different stuff over the years. Okay, so it sounds like that's been remedied. That's been remedied. The okay. hazard. Um, do any other commissioners have questions, comments, uh, notion for a motion? Maureen? <laughs> So um, it was my understanding that those site conditions that um, had not previously been approved, um, including the, you know, the main focus from our standpoint, because it was the thing that brought us out there after the discussion starting in the first place, was the encroachment onto the front lot. Um, so which is the area that's within a lot of revision. However, that this plan would be showing those things that they are proposing in order to then obtain permits because they won't be able to get permits for, um, say that the, um, sorry, I forgot the title of the area to the south, um, the concrete area. They wouldn't be able to get a permit until you approve the plan that shows it on that. So I think this plan, that my understanding of the intent of the plan is to um, fix and show those things that have been improved on the site as well as the other improvements they intend to make so that they can obtain any necessary permitting for those things. Okay. Uh, but yes, they were violations to start with because they were installed before permits or your approval occurred. But the, this plan is showing that in order for your reasons. If I heard right, all the, the approvals in 2008 weren't completed. They weren't didn't need to be. I'm sorry, the, the parking area in 2008 did not need to be extended unless it was deemed to be necessary. At that time, those extra spaces were waived as not needed. And therefore, they did never extend striping and parking. They actually did at one point extend it a bit because they needed some extra parking. So along the north side, um, Um, over in this area, I don't know exactly what the extent is, but there was a review in comparison with the previously approved plan that they expect parking over there somewhat because they, their use ratio inside changed. So is there, I mean, your staff are advising us, uh, Violation that's on the property right now, so you have to get building permits for those concrete things, and, and that and part of it is we doing a map on that thing. Uh, we didn't have we didn't have uh, permits for the concrete barriers uh, parking lot. Not that I know of. I was looking at this as a plan of what is where and how much space is there, and just gratifying it. Not looking to see which things are violations. 
I, I just, I if everything, I didn't look to that. If everything can be corrected, whatever's got to be corrected on this map uh, before our next meeting, I have no other pro problems with, with uh, approving it as long as that all permits anything else that needed to be done is done, and then we can approve it. Because I hate approving something when there's violations. Of it. Commissioner Rogan. <laughs> As I am, Commissioner, so just the, um, between what I can't hear you. Uh, I can see you're not muted, but we can't hear you. I think it just. Speak us directly into the front of your um, laptop if you have a laptop as you can. Oh. Is, is this any better? Yes, much better. Okay. Um, so, no, I'm just trying to clarify, I guess, what's what I'm hearing mm -hmm. between uh, our staff, uh, Ms. Justy and Commissioner Zygmunt, is that in order to get the permits to make the corrections that Commissioner Zygmunt would like to see is that they would need to get an approval on this site plan application so that they can go forward and get the permits. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, for the most part, yes. The, the uh, data clarity, I, want, I also want on the, on the zoning chart that that would be clarity that would, could be shown with them. Plans. Okay, so if we were to hold this up till next meeting, then there would be really no point because they couldn't get the permits that Commissioner Zygmunt is asking for without this approval. Right, they would not be able to get a permit without a site plan approval that shows the improvement on an approved site plan. Okay. And then need that lot line moved to accommodate that right. Yes. Um, excuse me, Diane. Yes, John. All right. I, I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I understand uh, Commissioner Zygmunt's concern, but I also understand that we're trying to help the client or, or the, uh, the property owner move forward. And instead of bogging it down, I think I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to roll the dice and make a motion that we approve this uh, subject to staff comments and working with staff um, so that we can let this project move on. And I'm sure that as it does, um, it will clear up any problems or issues or concerns that Mr. Zygmunt has. So, Commissioner Rogan, I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve subject to staff comments by Chairman Bailey and seconded by Brian Rogan. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Steve Paiello, is he still there? Aye. Running? Yeah, I'm here. Aye. 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 Just, just for discussion, uh, if staff can take care of it, that's not my problem, but uh, I don't want the maps filed. We can approve them with all uh, staff's. Uh, stuff approved and maps, maps drawn correctly and they can't be filed uh, until the staff satisfied that uh, all the corrections are been made. That way, that way it's approved, it's approved, but the can't be filed until the... John, will you amend your... Um... Um, if if it it'll help move us along, yes, I will amend my motion to include that. To include that, uh, Brian. I'll amend my second. Okay. Um, motion to approve, subject to staff comments and the amendments that were just discussed. Um, made by uh, John Bailey and seconded by Brian Rogan. Um, those in favor. Aye. 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 All right, passes unanimously. All right, keep moving right along. Oh, 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. is for 178 New Britain Road. It's an existing um, single family residence with a detached garage. That's approximately nine of us, 900 square feet, two car detached garage with an adjacent office. And uh, it's, it's up north of the corner, the former 7-Eleven property on New Britain Road. And our, uh, our intent is to enhance the property, uh, convert the existing garage uh, to, to a, uh, a retail space. And we're working, and, and this is news to staff, but we're working in, um, with the uh, adjacent owner of that former 7-Eleven uh, site to uh, hopefully uh, Clean up the whole corner, condoize it, so we can have one great big open space there. But in the interim, we're looking at, as you see the map behind you, or uh, the map. Uh, we have a current tenant, uh, an interested party, uh, for a uh, barber shop there, and uh, that property is pretty overgrown. There's shrubs along the front, so there's going to be a, quite a bit of an enhancement there asphalt parking, a landscaping plan, and uh, removal of that fence between the two properties. So it should turn that old corner that's somewhat blighted into a nice looking intersection there or corner when you're arriving from the New Britain Port part of town. There has been much, has not been many comments in, in objection to it, uh, town engineer really said if any work was outside the right of way, we need permits and by the state of Connecticut because it's a state road. That was it. Fire marshal had no comment. We said no comment, comment uh, economic development, uh, positive of it. Health district asked that we um, that we tie the, uh, the subject uh, property that's being enhanced into its own storm water. We will do that. We made those changes on the plans. And then the only other uh, building inspector said that they wanted to Review the property and uh, staff, Maureen, uh, concurred. They thought it was an existing residence, and I said it was not. So uh, they're welcome to uh, walk through the property at any time. And that's really all we had for comments. It's a very simple and straightforward plan. Just that's uh, the building towards the front with the this existing brick, brick uh, residential house, two bedroom. That, that's not a house anymore. But that's that's a house, the property in the rear. Okay, the property is the rear is the one you want. The building in the rear, I'm sorry. Okay. And this is between what I call wall of all tire and so uh, yeah. Okay. Maureen, do you have any comments? I do have some comments. Um, on this one, I would like um, to work with the applicant to get the plan cleaned up so that we have some dimensions and make sure that there's some other things that are shown and that are shown to be compliant. Um, before you approve the plan. I would prefer that on this one because there's a number of items. Um, I would just, in explaining as far as the things to enhance the presentation of it, um, from a site plan standpoint, the trees, the property is substantially screened from the road right now by tall bushes. They're proposing to remove those all along the Britain Road and create planting beds, and the planting plan is on the plan sheet that you got as far as the 
and the plant mix, et cetera. So the commission should evaluate that plant mix um, for appropriate landscaping. Um, this driveway width um, is not dimensioned, and I'm concerned that the regulations may call for it to need to be widened a bit. So I'd like to work with the applicant on that, um, as well as comments. Um, there's, there's no dimensions around the existing building that these are both. The, the property is improved the way it is shown. However, we, we don't have all the data we would typically see on a plot plan. Um, and therefore, and, and the new parking spaces, these are newly laid out parking spaces for the mixed use property as opposed to a um, only residential property. There's also a couple of um, signs, freestanding signs shown along the in the planting beds out front. Only one freestanding sign is allowed, so I wanted to clean up for that as well. There's just so there's just a number of things on it, and I feel that there's so many that there's enough that I would rather have it cleaned up beforehand. Again, I'm sorry for those comments not coming in advance. This, this, we're catching up from being out for so many weeks. Um, the driveway and parking and the um, parking layout for the um, residential. Um, I was speaking with the town engineer about that, and we were still evaluating um, whether that meets all the criteria. And the must decide date for this is 6 12 or June 12, so it is after the next meeting. And on top of that, there would be extension. You want a motion to continue to the next meeting and then just all done. I and I, I mean, I think if the commission has any comments, then we can incorporate it so we can get it as cleaned up as possible. It would be wonderful, but I have comments at this time. Yeah. Um, does anybody have questions or comments? No, the commission, no, me done done properly. I think mm -hmm. for that site. So I, if I may add, we, um, it does not appear as though there was a conversion of that garage to residential. It was converted to from being a garage. And it no longer appears that way. It's not inside yet, but it does appear as though it did not have it as a residence. Any commissioners participating remotely have questions or comments? Um, no, I think that Maureen covered it all, um, you know, so I mean, it, it, it's, I think it's a good undertaking. Um, it'll be nice to have it cleaned up and, uh, you know, brought up to snuff, but um, so I, I encourage them all to proceed with the project. And is that encouragement in the form of a motion to continue? If, if you'd like to, I would make, a, I would happily make a motion to continue. Thank you very much. No so, problem. Okay, we have a motion to continue uh, by John Gailey, seconded by Ten Sigfon. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you soon. Next item on the agenda, item C, Newport Realty, discussion for an outside cooler, nine steel boulevard. Is there somebody here to present on this? Tag team. <laughs> um, I'm here this evening in support of Mike Miller. I'll let you know that we're at a vital tipping point for our wonderful steel center development and its future success. After diligently working with Mike for three years, he is committed to come to Berlin. To say I was pursuing him is actually quite an understatement. I've actually been stalking him. Come to town. Since that time, since we started discussing, he has opened a location in Plainville. Before Hop House, the center of Plainville was sleeping. Now it's showing life into a large degree because of Mike and his vision. As you know, the effort to bring this project to fruition has been began with an RFQ in the fall of 2017. This fall, when I hope that Hop House is able to open the doors of Nine Steel Boulevard, we'll celebrate five years in the city to partner with the private sector. From what you have seen and experienced, I truly believe the town of Rome has made the right choice in our lovely and Tony Belinda. Saving you have an opportunity to think outside the box with a decision in front of you. 
The outside cooler space will allow Mike to do a couple things. One, use all the interior space to make food and create an atmosphere for all of Berlin's 20,000 residents to be proud of. And two, you can have a spot for any trash that accumulates and put it within the fenced area. On a busy Friday or Saturday night, he and his team do not have the ability to keep running garbage bags back and forth to the dumpster. And we sure as heck don't want him to have garbage bags in the kitchen where he's making the food. I know this was not the initial plans that you approved, but this is a key facet on whether Hop House comes to Berlin. Approved, I believe we may have a release. If they're not approved, they may not come. So I think it's important and imperative that you keep that in mind because this is really the center of our community and he has a model that works well that I think will be very successful and will be proud to have. Mike Miller, Aaron, on our Hop House Restaurant Group. Good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, I'm looking to come to Berlin. And because of the tight spaces on the other side of this nice steel boulevard, I need to be able to store some stuff outside. Um, if there was a basement or some sort of area for storage, it would make things a little easier for a walk-in cooler. Uh, this is a single floor plan. Um, this cooler will be full of air. It will be locked, it will be alarmed. Mark agreed to put a fence around it. The fence will match the building and it will have a roof over it. So basically, no one will ever see it. It's a space that I need and most restaurants have. The question I have is um, it was mentioned that aside from the floor, that it might also be used for like a trash area. Is that just temporary and then go to a container or would be left there overnight? Is that we have a large that cart that we put it in. Bring it out probably two or three times a day. Good evening. Good evening, Hi. Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. Mark Lobley, principal in Newport Riley with office at 710 Main Street, um, Suite 11, Plantsville. Um, up on the screen here behind you, um, if you see. We tried to shadow the um, and fence in the cooler in that area there with a gate um, that can be locked at certain times. And we actually took that and we have it back about 80 feet off the road. Um, and in the planning process of working with uh, Mr. Miller, we worked out to be able to put beige fencing around it so it'll blend in with the color of the building and the roof um, facade that'll go over the top of it. So you can't really tell that there's a cooler there. It'll look like it's just a fenced in area. So that's what we try to do to be co coexistent so we can look good from farming to have it. So we're spending a little extra money to be able to do it and do it right. And that's a question on it. Yes. This is similar to what you're talking about. 100% correct. That would be the one. The black one was the first one we looked at. And then when we were working in staff, when we uh, came in for a meeting, yeah. we decided to make it, instead of being black like that, we decided, decided to make it beige to match it with the color of that. Yeah. I just, this is a, uh, I don't want to say toy high, and then it's open up top here. Uh, and if it's going to be locked and stuff, then, then uh, I don't know, this uh, upper part should be louvered or something, you know, that that same color, mm -hmm. you know, and air can flow through and throw up food, but then it'd be uh, really secure, you know. Yeah. That area up there from the from the top of the fence to the bottom will only be about less than two feet high. We're probably going to try and look at maybe putting up a little bit higher of a panel, leave a little room off the ground just for for um, air and everything like that. The other note, the, the door that is to the right of that is only an emergency access out of the apartment building. It's not any main access. It's not an entrance. It's only for fire escape. So that would nobody will be going in and out of that door. I just have one question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and the I door coming into this cooler area, that just it's the access to the cooler area. Cool. That's not an exit, exit from the, the facility or not. No, only where the one that comes into the fenced in area, that's the door that goes straight into the kitchen. I have one question. Yes. Um, it might be a silly one. <laughs> oh, no, that's insane. Um, is would there be need for um, a drain for a condensation that comes from the cooler? Yes, we have we have roof drains out there that are in that area that we can tie that into. 
so it's not all gone out. Uh, any of our commissioners um, participating remotely have questions, comments? Um, I do, Madam Chair. Um, looking at the cooler, because it's a uh, because when you look down the street and onto onto Steel Road, you're going to see this this cooler. And I think they did a really nice job job dressing it out and matching the building. I don't have a problem with that. My problem is more for security, and it's not so much of the cooler, but it's for people who might be using the other portals to either access a business or. Uh, I'm not sure what the other red doors are going to, the ones behind or, or after the, um, the cooler system. So uh, is there gonna be security or web cameras outside? We can have a security system in the building um, and then we can put some cameras out there. This is actually not gonna be on the steel side. This is gonna be on the back parking lot side. So you won't see this from Steel Boulevard. And these are all rear access doors out of the spaces for fire. Um, okay. The entrances are on the steel side, but this is in the rear of the building over by um, Joel's building, on the, um, which would be on the westerly side of um, the bar property. Yeah. I guess my thought was is that that would be a really cool place for somebody to hang out and just, you know, wait for somebody to wander on by. And I, I, I guess I sort of, it, it kind of lends itself to the, the darkened door, you know, the darkened uh, valley or, or um, alleyway. And I think that's what it was, is I was hoping that there would be some security cameras there or lighting or whatever over those doors so that you wouldn't people have people hanging around back there. We do have lighting um, on the outside of the doors on the building and we do have in the sidewalks to which would be to the north and the south, we do have light posts in that sidewalk. Um, it will be lit up for the parking and for that whole side of the building. Yeah, I just I, I just don't want it to become a, a dark spot, no, so to speak. Control. Yeah, all right, yeah, other than that. So we did have a photometric plan done for that back section. Um, yeah. And it is designed that way to light up the whole parking lot at the back, because that's where most of the parking is for the residents for mm -hmm. the apartment buildings. And then what happens is they'll go in the vestibule to the north is where the entrance of the apartments mm -hmm. are. Apartment yeah. Back. Yeah, and especially if this uh, restaurant, it, if we're successful with this and it has, I don't know if it's gonna have patio dining or whatever out front, I'm not sure what the setup's gonna be. But if you have people during the summer who just decide, well, let's just go to the car, we'll go around this way. And so they start to walk back I just want to make sure that they're not going to have a creepy feeling and that, you know, when they're going to be able to walk safely um, and get to their parked car. I mean, other than that, I, yeah, I, th I think you guys did a really, really nice job and I'm really th thrilled with how the wraparound came about for the cooler. And um, cause I'll tell you my imagination, uh, I had some pretty horrible pictures in my mind, but this worked out to be, I think a real bonus. So, I mean, um, at, at this point, I mean, I, I, I feel very comfortable making a motion to approve it. Madam Chair, if you wish. Thank you. I could second. Thank you. We have a motion to approve um, and second it. Uh, is there a discussion? Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 I just have one question is how house moving from Plainville or this is another location? Third location. Third location. Congratulations. Okay, moving on to public hearings. Um, the town of Berlin Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing notice. The Berlin Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings at its regular meeting on Thursday, May 5th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Town Council Chambers, Berlin Town Hall, 240 Kensington Road, Berlin, Connecticut. Interested parties may join the meeting and participate in the public hearings in person or remotely as provided below. A proposed amendment to the zoning regulations. Attorney Dennis Sonovia on behalf of Red Lease LLC, section 
nine H three special permit uses self storage facilities. B subdivision application of Paul Fire Jr. for a two lot subdivision at zero Heritage Drive, lot fifteen K, block seventeen. The applications and related meeting materials are available at the Planning and Zoning Department, Burlington Town Hall, through two forty Kensington Road, Burlington, Connecticut. Remote access to this meeting is available by Zoom video conference at the following link, uh, which I will not read that. Um, meeting ID, uh, we don't need all that either. Okay, so uh, Brian Rogan, Secretary, Berlin Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, this was run in the New Britain Herald classified advertising legal notices on Saturday, April 23rd and Monday, May 2nd, 2022. Um, so first on the agenda for public hearings, Item A, special permit site plan applications of Shuttle Meadow Development, LLC, for multifamily development at 309 Main Street, East Berlin, and this is continued from May 5th. Good evening. Good evening, Commissioners. For the record, my name is David Carson, one of the principals of the OCC Group of Offices of Cheshire, representing the applicant. Um, as I'm certain to recall from our last meeting, our proposal is for a um, 19 unit condominium project on the easterly side of Main Street in East Berlin, um, comprised of uh, an existing two family house, which presently occupies that lot, and 17 additional units and um, five other buildings on the site. Um, as I mentioned, Last meeting, this plan has been reviewed by the various departments within the town of Berlin. We have um, met all their uh, comments. It's also been approved by the in the Wetlands Commission. And since um, our last meeting, we uh, addressed a few comments that were made by, by the commissioners and we made um, Two minor revisions to the plan. The, the comments that we addressed um, were in regard to uh, along the northerly property line here, there is a, a six foot high solid fence proposed along this, this area. The original plan had called for the wood or vinyl. The applicant has, has agreed to put in a vinyl fence. That would be on the maintenance problem. The plans have been revised accordingly. Uh, another um, issue that came up with we are um, our intention is to maintain all the um, existing mature trees along the property line. These are large trees. They are right on the property line. Um, been there probably uh, close to 100 years. Um, there is a retaining wall along this portion of the site. The proposed retaining wall um, is really only two to four feet high and then uh, backed out. I think it actually gets to five feet right at the corner. It's 15 feet off the property line um, with the intention of saving those trees. But we have added a note to the plan that in any area along here where due to grading, we're going to lose one of the, the tree on the property line, then between the property line and the retaining wall, we'll plant everything. Um, so continue the existing screening that, that's there. Um, another round, there was discussion about uh, trash removal and the plan calls for um, individual garbage can pickup. We discussed this again with the with the applicant and that is what we're going with um, this is really a kind of a high-end kind of uh, the units are actually single family, small single family houses put together it's not a typical townhouse uh, kind of medium uh, project so if um if municipal trash pickup is not available um, because of the configuration of the site, and it will be individually contracted to, to pick up those trash cans on a basis. Um, another very good 
um, point of discussion last uh, meeting was about the existing two family house, which apparently has been in disrepair for a number of years. It's a key element in our in our plan that was chosen to be saving, saved um, in order to make a seamless transition between um, the apartments to the, to the south and the typical residential character of the rest of, of Main Street. We've added a note to the plan that, that in the contingency that the renovation costs proved to be excessive, then the house will be rebuilt in the exact same location. I, I think that pretty much addresses um, the, uh, the things we talked about um, last week, uh, last meeting. Um, we did, in, in reviewing the plan, I realized that we had not put a central mailbox location on. We've added that to the plan as well. I'm happy to answer any additional questions the commissioners may have. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions? Yes. I reviewed this. I was not at the last meeting, so I have reviewed it. Uh, the last meeting and reviewed these plans. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me is a bus stop pad. There's no bus goes up to Main Street. Okay. Uh, so that being used as pad. Okay. We really don't expect any children either. <laughs> you know, if it was on 372. The bus goes up 372. Uh, and I got to say that I have a problem. It's going to be an improvement to the property that I understand. I have a problem. Something comes up to this commission with a zoning violation, like I said earlier. That this house was uh, it's on the uh, uh, light list, I think it is, and the boat in the yard, uh, trees down, and grass not even mowed. Uh, it, it bothers me that a developer would come and want us to plant uh, to prove something when the violations are there. That would be very easy to clean up the mowed grass, take, take the wood, the tree that fell down, and take the boat out of there, and that takes about three quarters of the problem away. Uh, so <laughs> I got, I got, you know, every time this happens, it, you know, and uh, Tom, I'm sorry, it's not the first time he had a zoning violation on something that came to us. Uh, you know, I would just appreciate cleaning up, make it look good, uh, before we could say yes to a beautiful project, you know, I mean, uh, and the prop, the property next door is kept nice. Now they look, 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 I'm surprised, but uh, uh, it's kept nice. It's been doing a little bit more landscaping, and I think that this property here really needs a lot more landscaping because now we're getting into the single family residential a little bit further down Main Street. Uh, so that uh, you know the, the stuff that we like the flowers and the beds and all that other stuff uh, I think got to be enhanced on this property. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, again, if the T's and the I's are all dot, across dotted, uh, you know, it's a heavily decent project. Uh, I think you've got a crew now to go out there in one half a day and, and, and clean the whole thing up. Well, no, okay. yeah, I, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Zygmunt. Zygmunt but uh, and and you're you're correct. Uh, you know, the, the property we purchased was when we purchased was in complete disrepair. Oh well, yeah, uh, it's continued to be in disrepair. We. We waited for this project to get forward. The last two projects we've done uh, 
in town on the higher end of public than your, uh, in my opinion, best new subdivisions in the town selling these houses north of a million dollars. And prior to that, we're all disrepaired pieces of properties, whether there was a farm or a farm. And uh, and and our intent is to do the same here. You're right, the boat, you know, not my boat, somebody dropped it off. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I think the faster we can get this thing going. I think we get a long lot better. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, should we should bring in the plan. I don't take, I don't I don't take, I don't take it personal, and I hope you don't take no, it personal. I, mean, I don't try. I know you live in the area. I, I own. I, I don't live probably, close, but I live in the area. Yeah, so you see it frequently. I, I get drive by it. Yeah. But okay. the, I, I own the property across, across the street. I think we do a nice job over there. The corner house. Um, it's paint peeling. Well, we just painted the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have how many painters. But uh, I appreciate it, and I just think that uh, um, that's our intention. We'll get the boat out of there and uh, and uh, clean the site up. Sure. Commissioners, any other questions at this point? I'll, I'll, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'll actually, uh, Mr. Carson's right. If you if, if you want to do it before we file that mylar, we'll we'll get it done. I'll do fine. I'll do fine. I think I've got one other question. I'm yeah. sorry for the record and Tom Kokama for <laughs> for shadow the Uh the other thing, we've got a couple passive recreational areas, which I uh, always like on these type of projects. Uh but passive go, but you know. Uh, we see some of the projects come in with a exercise stations or something in that that's that's a regulation area you know or something designating that if there's kids here or people want to go have a picnic over there whatever uh you know picnic tables or something that that's in there designating that for passive recreational area it always enhances your enhances your project and uh, you know, would enhance this project an awful lot too, uh, with some kind of amenities. You know. So, as I may, if you notice that we um, we have a proposed gazebo in the in the in the quad, and we kind of specifically designed it that way. There's also a split rail fence going around. It's a, it's a relatively level area. The, Fence would be at the top of the slope. Below the fence are some uh, additional um, wetland buffer planting, and then and then the rest of the site is totally wooded. It it really is intended to be just some place where you can relax outdoors. When you're actually standing there in, in that location, it really is very nice and it's very serene because at that point in the project. You are totally behind the uh, apartment development that's next door. You are a couple hundred feet behind them. The houses on Main Street are like 300 feet. So it's not only just our property, it's the entire panorama there all the way to the Matabasa River. It's just a, a relaxing area. We honestly don't, we would expect young professionals here. We don't actually expect, expect kids or, you know, barbecues or that kind of thing, but it is a nice outdoor area where you can sit with a lawn chair or sit in the casino or whatever. I have that 1.5 1. 1. 1. kid there, you know, or half kid. What's that thing? 1.5 kid. All right, uh, this is a public hearing. Does anybody have any questions for the uh, have any comments either in favor of this project or in opposition to? And there's nobody else um, other than commissioners participating remotely. Maureen, do you have comments for us? So I did read through my comments at the last meeting, um, and I believe they all still stand. I can run through them fast if you want me to, or we can reference the, the last meeting. What's the part of the commission? Second review. Okay, quick review. So in the wetlands approved the related wetlands permit, they're meeting with May 3rd. 
So the reason I mentioned that in the last meeting was it happened just two days before the meeting. So I have been outstanding on the comments that came in from um, departmental staff. Um, the outdoor mechanical equipment, um, it doesn't look as though there's any shown on this plan. It, and I may be confused, but I believe the plan of sharing doesn't show an update that you just talked about. Or did you, you updated the plan since the last meeting? Yes, two, two sheets. The site, we have the site plan and the landscape plan. Okay, is it the plan on sharing? Well, it would be hard to tell because it's nothing really but notes. Okay. It would be dated. Um, I want to say April 11th. Um, okay, May 11th. Okay, so the plan I am sharing, okay, so this yes. is the, the most recent plan. Yeah. I'm sorry, with me being out of the office and looking at things remotely, digitally, as well as in paper, sometimes I not really sure on the screen, the whole plan. I really miss my drafting board. Plans I can lay out every time. <laughs> um, okay, so any signage or directional signage, um, if it's proposed, it, you know, it has not been discussed or proposed, but that would always be zoning review in the event they were going to put any in. Um, outdoor lighting, be any outdoor lighting be in compliance with the regulations and review to the satisfaction of staff. If any changes from what's been presented, um, the um, the one question that I don't recall being answered was the day of the last hearing. I was still I, I had just arrived from the, for the meeting. Um, the is there a facing plan? Are you planning to build it out all at once? Build it out all at once. Well, I mean, you're building one building at a time. Yeah, right. On demand. Okay, so I uh, made it clear um, from the beginning because it's something that we've been implementing over the last several years is that any attached units are all built out with a single uh, seal gets is for a cluster, not an entire building, even if those buildings are attached to each other, those that's one building as far as CEOs go from, from the zoning standpoint because of the site work, et cetera, that has to be done in, in relation to those. So um, that would be, I'd like to make that clear for any applicants because some of the applicants that have been around for many years um, aren't used to that. Um, um, discuss that. Um, I'd just like the commission to acknowledge whether or not the architectural elevations um, and are all acceptable because that's one of the criteria to for the commission to comment on. Um, these were discussed, all taken care of. Any yeah. restrictions? Do you have the elevations? Hopefully. Okay, so yeah, I don't remember seeing any architecturals, and I was going to ask about them. Do the last page. Uh, question one more is Lori trying to talk to elevations. If you are going to do this in phases, are you going to do it front to back, or how how would you determine? Okay, good. Just curious how okay, you this can do this, it. this can be done in phases in the traditional term of talking about phases. Mm -hmm. That's and what I'm trying to understand. The, yes. the site work, the entire site has to be developed. Obviously, you're not going to build five buildings at the same time. The entire site has to be done. Build that building, then build the next building, then build the next building. Okay. So that's not phase. Okay, I just wanted clarification so we we're all yeah. on the same page. Yeah, the entire site would have to be done in order for the train system, roadway system, and everything to work. Uh, I see that elevation there, picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty much the standard picture of the type of unit. Uh, now, the, the structure of the two family that's in the front, okay. The all will be built with the same type of material where we're designed with the same type of material. And what type of siding do you want to go for? So not to go for a hardy board on them or you go, you go with the uh, vinyl or, or some real good looking vinyl. We, we wanted to do uh, hardy board. Yeah. The intent is hardy board uh, um, clapboard. Yeah. Hardy plank clapboard. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 
materials are just so expensive right now. So our intent, I think, when we start this project is we're going to uh, build the whole site, as Dave said, uh, build the, the front building first, uh, renovate that front building first. So we're going to do that for sure in RD Plank. Uh, and in consistent, I, I believe we're going to, our, my, my brother and I discussed with David White for everything. So uh, we'd like to keep Hardy Plank, but it's really demand. And if the economists are correct and we do go into a recession, that's why we are going to build buildings at, at one at a time. We'll see how they, uh, if, if I don't want to pigeonhole myself um, and you say cheap vinyl, but you know, uh, on, uh, I mean, it's a good, good vinyl too. Yeah, yeah. right. Not the, the, you know, we don't want the, but the admission. No, I understand. The initial building we're going to go right after it with uh, ready quality um, uh, materials. If you drive down Main Street, which I do every day, uh, the old houses, the historical houses down Main Street are clad board. Uh, and they have either sculpt uh, in the peaks or something, you know, something sculpted on the, the peak. Bring, bring it up just a little different color of what the main body is, you know, just a break up. Uh, and that kind of uh, thing I think would be very sold there for you. Uh, and especially that house leading in to the property, that, that's the most important big house there, right? right? Uh, so I think if you bring it towards the Drive down that street, bring it down, look at those old historical houses down there and try to bring it up towards that attitude. Uh, I think that that'll be really great you know, breaking up coming into a main street. And Hardy Ward's mine. Okay. <laughs> Most costs. Costs might come out higher later on. <laughs> They're not sharing the elevations. Yeah. Oh, if there was a more detailed no. elevation provided. No. Okay. First so thing you would have. One garage and one parking. Two parking. Yeah, so if, if, if you know that, as I said, these are, these are 1,700 to 1,900 square feet. They're actually single family houses uh, put together. So each one of those units is different. So there, there's three different floor, floor plans. So they're not only different from the outside, they're different on the inside. Um, they do, in my opinion, offer a lot of opp opportunity with um, uh, clutter boards and the ridge boards and things like that. If they were, you know, if, if it's white siding, you have an opportunity for some Gray corner boards and stuff like that. So yeah, a lot of yeah, that a lot of gingerbread there. Well, the, the more gingerbread right in with the three different types of peaks, yeah. I think it's it's a big opportunity to do that gingerbread with the white boards. Yep. White boards around the windows and yes. and that that kind of uh, architect. And uh, that's what we've been doing our downtown with. And uh, you know, I think it's a good good way to go. Maureen, can you share um, the other styles so that the commissioners can see online? This is the only page that yeah, that, found that shows. Right, that is the that is the only page. Did I misunderstand? No. So you see, there, there's three units put together there. Each one of those units is a different. Oh, I see. Different, I, different I did misunderstand. Style. And, uh, and the, the, the two <laughs> four unit buildings on the end, just add, add another one of those, one's on the end, the other side. Yes. So there's a unit that's on the right. Thank you for the clarification. That was good. Right uh, commissioners participating remotely, do you have questions or comments? 
Uh, okay, we are in public hearing. Going once, going twice. Oh, yeah. my comments. oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Marty. The next one is just kind of a, a really important one. So I'm very concerned about getting it on the record, which is that the restrictive bank language for both the conservation areas and the affordable units. Um, and I'll remind everyone that there are four, four affordable units uh, proposed for the complex that that language be submitted for staff prior to filing and prior to the uh, first CL. And by the fact that I just first CL. Um, the uh, um, awesome, outstanding staff comments be um, the department so the staff comments be satisfied to that department um, prior to the appropriate time summer before summer during the construction phases with fire marshal issues and stuff. But, um, the bonds bonds be submitted to your standard soil, soil erosion control and, and the bonding, um, as well as implementation of the soil erosion controls before um, site disturbance. And the conservation markers consistent with the established design of the as be uh, approved for locations on the plan through SAP and be installed prior to uh, any <coughs> disruption within the area. And that the thing that we're doing as far as staff goes is asking that the soil, the silt beds be installed least along the conservation line before site start start and stop starts so that the contractors working don't oops went over the line instead that delineates that line if they do put it further further outward of the site that's fine you know put yourself on construction side of the site that's okay as long as that that line is protected prior to disturbance and that the final site plan showing all installed um, improvements in accordance with the plot plan checklist be submitted um, with the final building permit certificate of occupancy request. And that's everything. That's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> yep. Thank you. <laughs> it is much easier when I have time to type it out with the I'm sorry. It's better for all of us. We're getting there. Well, we need a full time assistant. <laughs> I think Tim's volunteering. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, commissioners, uh, questions, comments? Hmm. Do you need a motion? Uh, we just had a motion to close the public hearing uh, by Commissioner Coppola. I would appreciate a second. second. I'll second. Whoops. I'll Go ahead, Tim. By Commissioner Sigmund. Okay, the uh, public hearing is closed mm -hmm. and we'll move on to the next item. Okay. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. Uh, item B under public hearing special permit applications and unified site plan of Sebastian Malaspini for properties at 202 12 Hill Street, Map 10 3, Block 86, Lots 5 and 5A in the CCD 2 zone for residential apartments, a fast food restaurant at Lot 5A, 202 Mill Street, and the addition of a drive through lane at Lot 5A, 202 Mill Street. Uh, this hearing started uh, previously and uh, was last discussed on May 5th. Uh, Good evening, hey, everybody. Likewise, if you wait one minute for you, those of you online, it'll take me a minute to get the share screen up. Hopefully, I'll find the one I have at the last meeting. But I'm Sebastian Malaspini. I live at 78 Grove Street, East Berlin, and my wife and I own 202 and 212 Mill Street, and we are looking to expand the property, uh, expand the building. Um, 
currently there is a approximately 6,000 square foot flower shop with a warehouse upstairs, retail downstairs. There's a 1,250 square foot office space here that's currently at a long term tenant in it. She told me the other day she plans on staying very long term. There's a garage. And then this is a proposed new building which I have architecturals for. I don't know. Do you folks have the architecturals for the new building? No, so, I don't know. I believe we showed them. I seem to remember seeing them, but I believe they were shared with me last night. Okay. I brought a copy of them just so we could uh, talk about it. Um, we want to try and keep the New England style, just like the idea of it being kind of that little village feel. Keep it in tone with what we already have there. Um, the project was approved by Wetlands um, back on January 4th. Um, DOT uh, reviewed the project and they made changes that they recommended. They had some minor putting drains, things like that, that they didn't want in their right of way. They didn't want one of the driveways, so we took it out. Um, see, we pretty much addressed all of staff's comments. Um, we got the retaining wall design and stamped by a structural engineer. I have a lighting plan here. That shows uh, the specific types of lights that we're proposing, as well as their, uh, their I guess you'd call it uh, candle full power, the lack of their luminance. Um, it's zero at the property line. I know at one of the previous public hearings, um, one of the members of the public was very concerned about the lighting. And um, you know, I took that to heart. So I kind of looked around and our neighbor, I think might, I'm not, you know, I, I think they need good lighting, but, you know, I have like one LED light here and two LED light heads here and one on the garage and they're very small lights. There's about five or six, there's six actually high pressure sodiums next door that are on all night. And I think that's where the light's coming from. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think they need them. They're first responders, but I don't live there. So it's interesting to say. Um, so this really addresses any issues that we might have with our life. <laughs> um, let's see. At the last meeting, we talked about um, the noise level with the drive through. So I've done some, um, I've done a little bit of reconnaissance work, and I don't know if you're interested in seeing a handout on it or not, or if it's sure. you know, that's what it comes in. So I basically did a little reconnaissance work around, mm -hmm. <laughs> just drove around and, and uh, you went to all the drive throughs I did. <laughs> with the sound feeder. The sound feeder. <laughs> yeah, it's an F, and it works really well. Because I got one at Harbor Freight and tested it, and it was equal to Harbor Freight's office. Can I ask you about six months? Can I ask a question? Yes. So do, you, do you recall sending the plans digitally to me? I, I believe Ozzy did, yes. So they would come from Ozzy? Yeah, they would be from Ozzy or Danny Torres. So, um, you know, uh, after looking at it, from, you know, from a sound standpoint and a distance standpoint. Um, I drew a 500 foot radius around our proposed speaker. And then I drew a, drew a 500 foot radius around existing uh, speakers that are close. There are some in town like Irving on a Berlin Turnpike that's 1300 feet. But even the Dunkin' Donuts on the Berlin Turnpike is about 600 feet from the houses on Worthington Ridge. And the closest that we are to a residence is the little yellow house at the corner of Worthington 
and Mill Street were about 417 from that. And then the rest of them are pretty much 500 plus. Um, so I went through CVS's. Um, you can see on here the distances. Anything in black is to a house that's not zoned residential, but it is currently a residence. And anything in red is the distance to existing residences that are zoned residential. The shortest distance I could find was the car wash. He's got about 81 decibels and he's 90 feet away. That's really quite loud. Uh, and then we, I went up to Main Street and I looked at Bank of America and Dairy Queen and uh, Webster Bank. They've got a lot of houses within 500 feet and a lot of um, houses that are not in residential zones within much, much closer than that. So that's just the synopsis of that. Then the next part of it is I did a uh, kind of an average decibel check around the property. And most of the drive throughs in town, with the exception of the Fresh Monkey and the car wash, are about 65 to 70 decibels. The other two are 80 plus. So I, um, I did a, a quick sound test around the town. And um, when you get 100 feet away from Duncan Mill, it's right directly behind the speaker straight line 100 feet out. Um, it does not register on the meter and I couldn't hear it. That doesn't say much because my hearing's not that great. So, um, but 100 feet away, it didn't register on the meter. We're talking about being 400 feet away with volume control. I did look into um, soundproof fencing. It's nothing more than PVC fencing, decorative, like slat fencing filled with uh, waterproof, weatherproof bat wall. But I don't I don't know that it's even necessary based on the based on the few tests that I did around town. I went up onto Vivian Drive behind the fresh monkey and no effect to the meter and I couldn't hear it when I saw the car coming through. I saw several cars coming through the meter. Very ingenious. Um, would you remind us, uh, were we planning to do a fence along that boundary anyway? Yes. Okay. Yep. The, um, the engineers proposed back here, they proposed a chain link fence. But I honestly think that probably starting here, down through this way, it would afford these people a lot more privacy. And then with the Arborvites, it would really give them, you know, some nice, nice privacy. Uh, the headlights do aim down from the drive proposed drive through, mm -hmm. so lighting with the cars isn't really a huge issue. Um, but I, you know, I do think it would look better, in my opinion, if I were to do starting right about at this light standard to here, um, PVC fencing, and then this be chain link along the back that's not visible, and probably not really chain link. I think the detail shows like a, an aluminum rail. I don't really want chain link on the property if we can help it. I'd really rather have the aluminum balustrades with the cross acres. I did find a note at, from a, the last meeting that says the architectural notes were not available at the meeting. So the, arch, did not oh, the architectural the last one. I, I but I do. That's I have, what you said. I recall that exact statement. Actually, <laughs> now that you say that, I believe that's what we'll hear on the case. So, um, so be searching for them. Because <laughs> that's what I would do. Would you like to see small copies of the architectural? I have some good. Sure. So that's helpful or not. Unfortunately, I won't be able to 
share anything on the screen that we didn't get in advance of the meeting. So, and I so far have not found. I will. Thank you for taking that in. Okay. So this up, this upstairs would be apartments. This downstairs would be uh, retail. This is the Mill Street side. I've been thinking about the possibility of putting. Um, they're like open pergolas that hang off of the property off of the, uh, they use them all out like on the Cape and in Nantucket and stuff. They're kind of open pergolas. I really like the idea of that against the Hardy board. Um, I think that'd be kind of cool, a nice white, you know, maybe just two or three feet kind of on an angle with uh, finial ends on it. That'd be really nice there. So I was thinking about maybe adding that to the architecturals. So this building would be a total of 4,000 square feet, 2,000 up, 2,000 down. Downstairs would have open retail. They could they could build it out however they wish. And then handicapped bathroom, furnace room, water heater, and a mirror image of it there. Galvanized steel, a little bit safer from fire or fire from what I understand. Um, don't know that for a fact, but that's what I was told. And then upstairs would be a mirror, two bedrooms, two bathroom, Laundry room, utility room, walk in closets. I would want these to be somewhat higher end, not crazy high end, but you know, granite, tile bathrooms, that sort of thing. This is the existing flower shop. And really, the only change to the existing flower shop would be this is the floor plan now the warehouse upstairs, the furnace room, front stairway, rear stairway. Um, this is downstairs. Um, there's a cooler and you know sales area, that sort of thing. Workshop back here, front sales counter, little office, um, handicapped bathroom. So that would pretty much stay the same from here back. But what we're proposing is on the front of the building to add dormers to bring light into the proposed apartments and make them safer because of the egress. So the front dormers do not exist now. They would be added. And then a drive-through would be added to a drive-through window. So that would be the architectural changes to that building. Everything else would pretty much stay the way it is. And then downstairs in that building, we would have a separate little coffee shop. This is only 850 square feet even though the calculations would allow for 1,250 square feet, I thought it would be better to have some buffer in case she wants to grow her coffee shop or something to that effect. I didn't want to go right to the max, 75 square feet. I mean, one parking space per 75 square feet for a restaurant. So we have extra parking for that. So this would remain the flower shop. We'd share an entrance. There would be a a glass wall here made out of French doors and she would have a separate entrance here. And then there would be, um, a, you know, handicapped bathroom here, janitor's closet there, and the rest of it would be a flower shop. If we had to, we could easily shut this off so that people can't get in the back. Now, that wouldn't be hard at all. We do have sliding doors in here already, pocket doors. And then upstairs, we would have a large apartment in the front of the building. Um, this would be on the east side, a bedroom, bathroom, living room, kitchen on the north side, overlooking Mill Street, a small bedroom here. And then the back apartment, both have two, two forms of ingress and egress. So there's um, a bedroom here, one, fan, one bedroom apartment, living room, bathroom. So that's the proposed upstairs at the flower shop. And then at the existing building here, there wouldn't be any architectural changes. We would just bring in, um, when we originally got approved for this, um, we had very young children and we made this an office space that was child friendly. 
And that's where a kid stayed with babysitter while we worked. They came home with us at night. It was never sleeping quarters. So all we would have to do to make this into a sleeping quarters or an apartment, I should say, would be to add a stove here. And this, is, this was rented for years to a parking company. COVID put them out of business, so it's been vacant. I do have someone who that works for me that desperately wants that space. So that would kind of be like a caretaker's apartment, so to speak. And then downstairs would remain State Farm. Lighting. And then that's the plan as it as it is now existing. I think that's all that I had for comments. Um, I will say that uh, at the last, at the, the first public hearing, both of the people, if I'm remembering correctly from the minutes, both of the people that spoke from the public weren't really concerned about noise per se. They were more concerned about the light. One was concerned about privacy, but he's literally 760 feet off to the southwest. So it's really quite a distance. That's um, those are all the comments that I have. Do you have any questions? Um, thank you. Um, I think we'll ask Maureen if she has any comments for us, and then we'll open it up to the commissioners for questions. I um, at this time don't have any additional comments. Uh, the one, well, I have one comment because um, I have searched uh, everywhere, I've possibly searched, and don't have the architectural, so therefore they. Um, commissioners that are joining in online or any public, which doesn't appear there is any, um, are not able to review and comment those. I don't think, certainly sounds like they weren't distributed to you previously. And um, if the commission decides that they want to review those in more detail or any other portion of the plan, we are at the timeline to close the public hearing. So if the public hearing was to remain open, we need the applicant to consent to uh, extension time. Um, the, I think the comments that came in from intergovernmental and really the, um, the crux of the decision with regard to the plan is the site plan and special permit, the uses, the having a drive-through, whether you're satisfied with the, the, the screening, the architecture, the layout, and, and whatnot that goes along with the special permit, the landscaping is a special permit consideration. So those are commission considerations. Um, again, um, I believe we already discussed the standard comments of it is a state road, so it does require the encroachment permit. Um, the wetlands um, already looked at it, right? you know, that was already closed. I just I can't remember the date right now. Um, and um, that's the, the interdepartmental staff comments that are through the permitting process be to their satisfaction as well as finding how be submitted as calculated by engineering and staff. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience um, that has comments either in favor of or opposition to the proposal? Um, commissioners, any questions, comments? <coughs> yes. Didn't hear none about the sidewalks. Um, that's, that's a sticky one. Uh, <laughs> The uh, was that missed on purpose? well the, the problem uh, and this is the honest truth then. if we bring it through the wetlands the engineer is telling me that it's going to be cost prohibitive I won't be able to do it because he's saying we have to fill at a certain grade mm -hmm. two to one I guess the state one two to one which means we have to extend a pipe uh, and fill into wetlands so I you know when we when we had it submitted last time with the bond money and they released it we thought it was done to be honest with you. um i i like the idea of the sidewalk but i don't know if on that end 
it could be done, uh, you know, within reason. I mean, I, I know it's not the commission's concern how expensive it is, but they're telling me the DOT commented on it as well, along with our engineer, and they said it's it's just really, really expensive. Like, you know, we used to have a, a planner here that thought about another piece of the puzzle, and maybe it'll be just the sidewalks in front of the properties that you have right now, uh, not not that steep bank area. Uh, and the town fills in some pieces the puzzle sometime. It might be 30 years down the road, but I mean I, I honestly I think it adds to that village feel. I'm not opposed to right, that. right. So, I like so, it. I mean, so it the, 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 the new the new building, your your uh, flower shop and the, and the next one, you know, those front inches uh, which are pretty level front front is easy to do, I guess. Yeah, very easy. Uh, you know. And you know, then it'd be another piece of the puzzle, like I said. Uh, you know, it's you uh, know, I, I um, you know, and they, and they are coming, they are coming out far from the end to to no plot or whatever. And yeah, I, and I, you're I, only going to be that gap. I completely, I, I do actually agree. I don't, I don't think the sidewalks are a bad idea, but the engineer is telling me. And no one's certain because I'm crazy for well, because, the, because of the cross, I understand. Madam uh, Madam Chair. But I don't I you know I don't know how the DOT feels about it, but in my opinion, and it's not a professional opinion, I don't see I why I couldn't just sneak it right against the road. It wouldn't have impact the grade. But as I, as I they're said, telling me no. A monolithic core right against the road. That's uh, that's what I think, but yeah. the engineer is telling me. His exact words are on the last meeting I said that yeah. model like the board and against the road, but uh an empire state won't do that. That's uh something to argue later on, I guess, the state. I mean, uh, I you know, I have no problem trying to get it done. I my only, you know, my only concern is that it holds the project up for something I, I wouldn't want to. I am willing to Tim, do it if we can get it to work. I pro really the am. project is a nice project, and I wouldn't want to hold up the project. I, that Excuse me, Madam that. Chair. But I think that's one of the, yes. the properties that you have. Uh, Madam Chair, if I can, um, yes. you know, I know that I know that Tim wants this sidewalk to go across, but I do also remember, I believe, when they were building Sharon or Elizabeth, and there was some discussion uh, regarding that culvert and putting a sidewalk over it, and we had the same problem back then as we are looking at today and I don't think it's going to make it any easier if we try to ram this through with a sidewalk on it. I believe at one point it was said well you have to go into the road about 20 feet to put your sidewalk so where are you going to put the cars. So um, Tim I, I understand what you're saying you know of another piece of the puzzle but the fact is that we've got that culvert and that culvert's very important because it drains out to the other field across the road and we can't fill it in for a sidewalk. So this is one of these parts that you kind of have to look back and say, well, it's not going to happen right now. Who knows? Maybe 20 or 30 years down the road, things will be different. But we're not, I, I, I don't support trying to push that sidewalk through to get over to Nutmeg or, you know, or toward Josie's or whatever. I do agree with you, Joan. I do agree with you. I'm looking at that picture, I see a sidewalk in front of the Amos building. Mm. Piece of the puzzle. <laughs> so, so uh, I got. But, but yeah, uh, but. And maybe the sidewalks going down towards the ridge would be the completion, you know. Yeah, um, but, but but you're uh, you're still gonna you're still gonna have that problem with that culvert there. It's it's not gonna go away, and it's not gonna go away anytime soon. That's for sure. Um, you know, I, I just like to jump in really quick on the project. I'm not opposed to the project. I think there's just a couple things that sort of just hang in the balance for me. And, and I, um, I know that the gentleman is trying to do the best he can and put everything together. And I think that that's great, but I kind of get the feeling that I'm seeing a lot kind of crammed into this one little space. And I think that that's why I've 
I'm sort of sitting back and I'm listening to proposal, the architecturals, and I know we're going to address the lighting. I know we have the neighbors that are already established there. And, you know, gosh, I wouldn't want a squawk box in my backyard. That's for sure. But uh, I, I know you're, you're trying to take everything the consideration and do the right thing. And we certainly don't want to stop you from developing your property. It's just, I sometimes have a sense when I, I think of everything that's happening, it's like there's so much, so much activity in this little spot. And um, I can't help but walk away with that feeling. And I think maybe, I, I know that she's your daughter or the, the person who's interested in the coffee shop is really looking for that drive-through window. But I think if you go or a whole donut, the whole donut, you drive up to the window, you order, you sit there, they give you your coffee, you go. They don't even have a squawk box. So that might be something that you might want to consider. I, you know, I would consider it. It's, it's certainly not optimum, but I know it does seem like it's a lot on a small parcel. Mm -hmm. However, um, you know, our, our road in front where the drive-through exit would be is, you know, 20, I mean, it's 42 feet, I believe. It's on the, on the submissions I gave you. And there's nothing on the other side of the street. When you go down Farmington Avenue, there is a lot of things crammed into very small spaces with mm -hmm. stuff across the street. Mm -hmm. We have like 55 feet in one direction from the driveway the driveway and 65 the other. When you go and you look at all the drive-throughs in town, some of them have three to five feet between driveways. Some have 13. So from an engineering standpoint and from, um, from an engineering standpoint and a practicality standpoint, it is one of, it is one of the better functioning spots for a drive-through. The squawk box is, is, you know, from what I've read, again, it's not, it's not professional opinion that I have, but from what I've read, it's not hard to overcome the sound from the boxes. They're much more advanced now. They have boxes called duplex, so they're not talking over each other. Um, the person inside can hear the person outside and vice versa, where the old ones were um, single plex and you, you would have to wait and then cause confusion and there was more conversation. I think the fact that, you know, I'm 500 feet in the direction, 500 plus, it's close to 60, the most of the houses out on uh, School Street and you can't, nothing registers at 100 feet. I mean, that's five times the distance without, you know, those places that I measure, don't have fences. They don't have arbor bikes. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have the latest technology. The Fresh Monkey is an 81 decibel box, and there's a huge subdivision behind it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it, it's just they have you know they have a lot of traffic in there. It's winding in and out through the car dealership, and we don't have any of that. We have in and we have out. It's very okay. simple. And I All really, right. really feel that from a, I really feel that, you know, from a, a practicality standpoint, it would be one of the better functioning drive-thrus in town. I really do. I'm not just saying that because it's my property. It's okay. a matter of well, All right. And the other, th the other thing too, is that I've noticed that more and more people, they're not even stopping at the drive-thru. They apparently have apps on their phone, especially the younger kids. And they order and they just go to the window and they pick it up. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm, um, not opposed to, so, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to not having speaker if we could just say in the future, if it's not working, if we could redo it. I mean, that is a very good point. I, I didn't even really consider that, that people do order on their cell phones. And that would actually be better for our business because it would cause less chaos. Yeah. I mean, even, I mean, so even, I, I hadn't even really thought about that. But yeah. I would like to try and reserve, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, yes, I, I will only yeah. and then find out it was a big mistake and I spent the money to put the drive through in the lane and mm -hmm. I really shot myself in the club. I, 
I mean, I, I my hope would be that I could get the speed. No, I, I understand. I, um, I understand where you're coming from. If I might, uh, you provided us with a lot of information that um, those of you that are participating remotely um, don't have the opportunity to see. Um, would you be okay with ex giving us an extension of time so that that information can be provided sure. um, for their review and then they're more comfortable with it? Okay. Um, you know, I, I agree with the um, concerns, but I also look at it like we've established a precedent. Um, we've allowed these things in um, many other areas. And, to my knowledge, they seem to be working okay. So well, that was one of the questions that I, I was curious about was, and, and I'm asking you because I want to be a good resident. <laughs> I don't want the need to met. I really don't. I have to work there. Right. So have people complained at the Fresh Monkey? Have they complained at Dairy Queen? Have, I don't know what the answer to that is. I only want to, I know that a speaker system was complained on in the past of board. Well, with Miranda, then. Oh, yeah, he put speakers on the outside of the building. And the phone could hear it up on Ronald Drive. Yeah. You know, when the, when the ridge went crazy, you know, but uh, I don't know if any. So, well, from a zoning enforcement standpoint, I'll answer what I can. Um, Mr. Zidman is correct. We get up, we had at one time complaints about the uh, PA system. PA system. PA system at things like new car dealerships. And I think the commission has done a very good job in the approvals I've seen in the time period I've been here. I'm always um, controlling those in one manner or another, um, as well as their snap text. And, and I don't know whether it was there originally um, back when those were installed. Um, but from the zoning standpoint, I have not personally gotten complaints with regard to um, the boxes or the, the drive through windows. They do tend to morph, in my experience, using them, that we don't always know when they're installing new equipment um, that might update the boards and make them brighter and lighter. And, you know, that, that actually it's the flashiness of them that I think is uh, more. Um, disturbing that I've heard more commentary on, but again, not complaints. Um, but the police department might be getting those complaints. Somebody else, if they don't know that. I'm not sure somebody would call the zoning office mm -hmm. if they were annoyed by the speaker system. Mm -hmm. So we haven't gotten them. Um, I do have one other comment that I noticed from last month, and because I was looking for those the plans digitally for so long, I wasn't tempted and not intently listening. But did you know you had commented that the last meeting the lighting plan was under contract when we submitted? Yes. So did we get copies of that I as just well? Got it today. I okay, just, so yeah. that's another item to be reviewed that I didn't think I'd review or seen come in. I know I didn't review it. The architecturals were on eleven by seventeen. Oh I don't know if that makes a difference in where they were stored. Um there was like what, not that I couldn't find that anything came in digitally. Okay. Oh, not digitally. I, I and it doesn't account. appear to have come. The it would have got scanned with the media package. I couldn't find one media package that it got scanned with. And I'm sorry for that because oh, it should have been uploaded as we got from. But so should I submit have things another? coming from various directions now. We get some paper, some digital. And reconciling that is a challenge. Absolutely. Okay, so it sounds like there's um, some work that needs to be done to make sure you have everything you need and then um, those participating online can have an opportunity um, to view what was presented tonight that uh, was not available to them. Um, so we'll just need your agreement to extend. I do agree, yes. Extend. Um, if you can write something out saying you agree to the extension to the next meeting, whatever. Okay, uh, sure. You can either write it out and hand it, hand it to me, or you can send it by email just later or tomorrow. I'll just sit down and write it out. So okay. just say, I, Sebastian Ellis, being approved extending the public hearing for two of the program on the street. So, okay. Consent to use extension time uh, to the next uh, okay. scheduled meeting. Excellent. Just in case the next one doesn't happen. We there's a hurricane. Right. There's exactly. a, who knows what? And I'll be proposing to uh, extend to the next meeting. 
continue. Continue. I'll have a motion I'll, to continue from Commissioner Zygma. And I'll second that motion. Second from Chairman Bealey. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Aye. Steve. Steve Bayella. Steve Bayella. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. You got it. Yourself. Aye. Aye. Okay. So um, we'll continue to the next meeting. Uh, Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Got a lot of work ahead of us here. So, um, I am seeing on the agenda proposed text amendment to the zoning regulations of Robert Rossi to add automotive appearance enhancement service use for automobiles, motorcycles, and pickup trucks. No mechanical and non sales to section, uh, what is that, 7CGI2 special permit uses. This also was started uh, previously and last discussed on. Um, uh, May 5th, and is there somebody here to represent the applicant? Come on up. You identify yourself, please, at the podium. Hi, uh, Rich Munson, I 90 Andrew Street, so I'm one of the owners of the property. Welcome. So, if I step in a minute, sure. Mr. Rossi, who had presented at the last meeting, was unavailable this evening, um, but felt that he had expressed uh, the reasoning and the uh, and the text and why it's worded as presented, et cetera. And that was uh, handled at the last meeting. Um, so, he did notify me today um, that Mr. Munson would be coming and would be able to. Respond to uh, answers and questions, etc. With regard to it, but I don't think you were intending to present anything. If you were, that's fine. But I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I'd certainly be able to answer any questions that you, that you might have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion to approve. Thank you. 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 You know, I mean, as we left it, I remember us just uh, basically giving Maureen some time to do some due diligence, crossing T's, dot her I's. Um, so I guess my question would be for Maureen, is there any comments that you would have or concerns that popped out at you? So, and so one of the things I said that I would be working on is um, looking through the regulation to see if the language was going to contradict any other language or uses and overlap with regard to um, how we already categorize any of those uses. Um, I couldn't find a correlation between, and if we have auto enhancement businesses that were not before I could figure out what zoning they came, they went into the commercial zone center, generally speaking. The ones I could identify are under, they are, are within the commercial zones. We have, uh, you know, the window ticking. I would think from the zoning, uh, and maybe they can respond if that is also one of the types of uses they would put into this enhancement is window tinting or uh, uh, body wrapping that they put on cars now, they put the, the shrink wrap kind of thing. Um, those are sometimes done by signage shops as well. So it's kind of a crossover business. Uh, again, those are, I, I don't believe we have one in town. The signage businesses are generally in our commercial zones. However, you did also get the um, opinion from the uh, economic development that this is appropriate for an industrial um, use area. So I couldn't find it enough. But, and the language is pretty short and sweet, so I think it's the yeah. uh, Parents are not at the pleasure of a commission. Thank you. I'm looking for the language to bring on the screen. If you 
Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? I just uh, she just brought that uh, something up that hit my mind. Uh, <clears throat> if there'll be it says no mechanical, but some of the rapid places or whatever they put the flares on the cars, you know, front flares or whatever, and they're all pulled down high flare things. <clears throat> and I'm assuming that they're bolting on something to the car that mechanical. Uh, but that's you know, if they're customizing the car or the vehicle. I think hold on, I am. I thought when we were talking about the mechanical, we were talking like automotive repair, which would require some. Well, you're right. The automotive repair is just a little bit different. If you're customizing a car, it's a little bit of a thing they put on, something like that. Uh, bolt on things and then they wrap them, you know, cut them up. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, if you're using a bolt and, and a tool, I would say that to Jim. That's my question. Is basically so, so from the staff standpoint, anything that was relating to the mechanical <laughs> that would require the DMV licensing is what this is not so if it needs a dmv license it has to go to the zoning board of appeals by statute as well as by our regulations um and that's if it needs a license none they have written the language such such that that is excluded those, those uses are not in the intended uses that in, are enhancements so they won't be touching the mechanical um, aspects from this State DMV standard. Yeah, Commissioner Rogan, I'd feel comfortable sticking with the uh, DMV standard um, as far as that goes. I would agree that I think mechanical would be more in line with engine work and stuff like that rather than wrapping or tinting or anything like that, uh, where that's more just modification or body work. Uh, we're in public hearing on this matter. Is there anybody from the public that has um, an opinion they'd like to share, either in favor of or opposition to the proposed text amendment change? Hearing none, are there any commissioners with questions, comments, or a motion to make a motion? Um, just, a, just a quick question, if I can. And this is to stay under the special permit uses, Maureen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Permit. Yeah. All righty. Special permit category. All right. Um, we're in the public hearing, so I guess I'll make a motion to. If we're all set with any questions, I guess I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. We have a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Uh, Commissioner Rogan. Commissioner Papa will beat you to it. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Ten. We're in public hearing. We're closing public hearing. I need your vote. I agree. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Sorry, I was on a long piece of paper. Uh, oh. okay. So the public hearing is closed, and uh, we will move on to the next item on the agenda. Stop <laughs> keeping you in line, Kathy. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, so item D under public hearings proposed amendment to the zoning regulations. Attorney Dennis Sanaviva on behalf of Red Lease LLC, 9H, 6H3 Special Permit Uses Self Storage Facilities. Good evening. Thank you for waiting. It was a long meeting tonight. Thank you. Uh, Chair, for your record, my name is Dennis Sanaviva. I'm an attorney with the Sanaviva Law Firm. 
721 Broad Street in Meriden, I represent both Friendly and the owner of the property uh, that's involved in with the genesis of this application or petition, also connected to the story. Um, again, recognizing it's a text amendment proposal, but before you, uh, we do have uh, as part of our presentation this evening, I have J.R. Clisham, who's principal with Connecticut Self Store, also an expert in the field, who can explain some of the benefits that might accrue to the uh, town of Berlin uh, in, the, in its uh, at least um, mathematical need for additional self storage. And also, Jim Sakanchi, who's the chief project engineer, should this go forward with Crasser Jones and Associates, and he'll be making part of the presentation also. So we filed a text amendment to permit self-storage facilities in the uh, BT2 zone. We started this process back around, I think, December of last year with uh, your planner and with the economic development director. Both of them were very, very helpful in our discussions. Um, after reviewing your regulations and looking at some of the things that you have done in the past in other zones to ensure there is not a proliferation of a new use. Um, this language was drafted and again, it's before you. So it, um, if approved, self-storage facilities would be permitted by special permit in the BT2 zone. Uh, there were seven, uh, rather six conditions that were added to that permitted use uh, that would have to be met under the special permit in addition to the special permit requirements. Um, we did, we added this language uh, so that the proposed amendment would accomplish three major goals. First was to preclude the development of such facilities that might resemble sort of the old stereotypical concrete boxes with junk strewn outside its building. We didn't want to, you know, there is sort of a, uh, I think historically a negative sense as to self-storage. Some of the facilities when I was young, which was a few years ago, were not necessarily attractive. Uh, concrete block, uh, eroded, infested. Uh, they could be unattractive and problematic. Um, that business has really developed well, and again, JR will, will express some of that to you, and then hopefully uh, Jim Sakash will show you the sort of developments that are being proposed in today's accounting for self storage facilities. Uh, we did add language in the uh, proposed regulation or, or tax amendment that would um, require compliance with the Berlin Turnpike Design Guidelines that you imposed several years ago. Uh, there would be an architectural feature required like a tower for the building as it faces, in this case, the Berlin Turnpike. No garage doors would face the Berlin Turnpike directly and there'd be no outside storage. And these were again were considerations after discussion with uh, your very capable staff. The second goal we tried to meet as part of this draft was to preclude the proliferation of such use by requiring the sites eligible for this use must be at least seven acres in size, have at least 650 linear feet of frontage on the Berlin Turnpike and only be approved by special permit. And I know that when uh, prior to coming here, we did go to your Economic uh, Development Commission, uh, made our presentation and you do have, you do have a report from uh, on that commission's findings, and I think Mr. Edge is going to speak on this matter tonight. Um, there is nothing magical about the size of the, of the property. We had a seven acre minimum under the terms of this regulation. I think Chris is going to talk to that. Uh, we have no problems with that being modified. It's going to be just a, a, an effort to try to minimize or limit proliferation at this point until you're comfortable. Again, this is a new use. As time progresses, if the self storage facilities turn out to be attractive, meet the needs of the citizenry of Berlin, you want to encourage more development, you can always change your regulations. You wanted to sort of start it slowly, much like you did when you changed the regulations in the PSB zone for uh, car dealerships. You had a certain minimum seven acres, I think seven and a half acres there. Uh, the third goal that we tried to uh, meet under the terms of this regulation as it was drafted. <clears throat> was to look at the purpose clause of the BT2 zone. It was designed it says, in this purpose clause to permit commercial and related uses that do not have detrimental impacts on nearby residential properties. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we added language in the regulations and the conditions 
that would minimize any impact on any uh, residentially developed or residentially zoned property that was uh, abutting the parcel. And so we've added language in here that requires at least a 90 foot uh, minimum setback from any residentially developed or residentially zoned property. The zone has as a standard 50 feet and requires a 50 foot setback, a rear setback. Uh, and here we've proposed the 90 foot provide a greater opportunity for buffer from any uh, residentially zoned or residentially used property. And so that we think that's a benefit uh, to this type of development so that any other B2, B2, uh, BT2 zone use only requires a 50 foot setback. Again, we're proposing under the regulations drafted that there be a minimum of 90 feet setback from any residentially zoned property. So again, the design of, uh, uh, of the language in this regulation is based upon discussions with your staff, um, looking at the property in particular, making sure that it complied with the requirements that are set forth. Uh, and I'm going to turn this over, Madam Chair, to Chair Clisham to talk to you a little bit about uh, why he believes there is a need for this sort of use um, in the town of Rome. Thank you. Hello. Um, as Dennis stated, my name is J.R. Clisham. I live in 30 Farmers Way in Avon, Connecticut. And I'd like to take a couple of minutes just to tell you a little bit about myself, my company, and why I really like this property. Um, so my, my name is J.R. Clisham. I'm the principal of CT Self Store, and my company focuses on the location, development, and management of premier state-of-the-art self-storage facilities in Connecticut. Um, I worked in the industry full-time since the year 2001. In that time, I developed 14 self-storage facilities, totally um, over 900,000 net rentable square feet, and just over a million in um, gross square feet. In addition to time spent as a developer and operator, I served in the National Self Storage Association's Board of Directors from 2011 to 2015, where I was chairman of the country in the year 2014. I also served on the state association as president of that association for eight years. Um, so based upon my, I bring it up, based upon my development experience in Connecticut and my time spent on these boards, national associations, I, I, I feel that my knowledge of storage in Connecticut is, is very solid. Um, we are interested, I'm interested in pursuing the parcel um, that we're discussing tonight next to Lombardo Motor Cars on the Brown Turnpike. Um, I want to point out that Jim will get into more detail on this, that we <clears throat> would like to build a tasteful project with both drive up and climate controlled units. Um, as a result of our design of the property. And as Dennis mentioned, none of the doors would be visible from the street. No roll-up doors would be visible from the street. Instead, the view of passersby would be of a wooden glass structure um, with quality lighting that resembles a nice office building. Um, you mentioned hardy plank before. That's what we would use facing the street, like a hardy, hardy board or hardy plank um, design that faces out to, to, the, to the public. Um, in addition, I want to point out that ours is a very quiet use. We cater to families that need extra room, and we always strive to keep our facilities extra clean and nicely landscaped. We're a family-owned business, um, and we think our customers feel more comfortable storing their belongings with us when the property is inviting, clean, well landscaped. Um, but we also act as a small business incubator with everything from real estate, from retail stores to people, accountants, lawyers, people with boxes they need to store for statutory purposes for seven years, a lot of times that, that, that's the case. And um, so that's, that I think we add value to the community like that as well. Um, we're, we're then also just to emphasize, we're a storage facility, not a workshop. We have no floor drains. We, you know, by the lease, you can't work on a car or build anything else. You can't hang out there. It's a storage facility. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a mini uh, industrial office or workshop. Um, our access hours are 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. everywhere. Um, we do not offer 24-hour access to anybody. Uh, on rare occasions, if you are moving, we'll give you through our, our code. You can get in there uh, you know, for a couple of nights, but we, we're closed at night. And we have managers uh, six days a week. We're closed on Sunday. 
our office is closed on Sunday, but you can get access to your goods every day, 365 a year, six to 10. Um, okay, just a little bit more here. So you, you may ask why this particular location? And a few reasons come to mind instantly. First, you can't beat the drive-by traffic on the Berlin Turnpike. And since I really feel that storage has become more of a retail use, I, I love the drive-by traffic on the Berlin Turnpike. I also know that there's about 500 new apartments that were approved in town. I would hope to you know, cater to them and even just other new developments like that. I really think we, we, are, we work well with that in enabling people to have an apartment but still have that jet ski, still have that second car, things like that that we allow them to have and still just put them, and still living in a smaller apartment. Um, also, no new storage facilities have had been built in Berlin in many years, and I feel that we can offer a nice new product for the town. And then finally, most importantly, please understand that we often analyze demand for suburban self-storage facilities by looking at a three-mile radius. Um, I use a service called Yardy Matrix. They do, they do a lot of work with hotels <clears throat> and self-storage. Um, and also our own market research, excuse me, <clears throat> has shown that there's only 0.71 feet of cell storage available within a three mile radius of this property. The national average is six and a half, uh, the national average is eight feet per person. Connecticut average is six and a half feet per person. And this is 0.71 feet. Even when we're done building, if we are approved, um, we, would, we would be still be below four feet per person. So we would still be, you know, catering to, uh, the market would still be underserved. Uh, in my opinion. Um, finally, other reasons. I, I think this parcel, I think, has sat empty for too long. Um, I know it has tough topography and tough soil conditions. We're very good at working with that. We've, we've done it many times before. Um, and finally, from, just from a straight up from the tax base perspective, similar properties we have of similar size, you know, once they're stabilized, typically in property taxes, it's over $100,000 a year uh, that we would contribute to the, to the town. And um, for all those reasons, I think we'd be a, a nice addition to, to the town. And now Jim is going to get more into the specifics of the, uh, of the property. Um, if I might. Yes. What's before us um, tonight is an amendment to the zoning regulations. We're not considering um, any specific application. Right. Um, so we would very much like to hear that information when the time is right. Um, and stick with the task at hand. So um, if you have other um, comments you'd like to offer with respect to the uh, amendment that you're proposing, we're happy to hear that. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairperson. I, I, I don't want to be presumptuous. I know oftentimes in different communities, there's a there's an interest in seeing a picture uh, uh, along with the words. So it's maybe just uh, it provides a little greater um, sense as to what the impact is of a vote in favor or against a particular text amendment. And that was the reason it wasn't to try to bore you sure. yours with a, with a site plan. And we know we're not at that level. We're really talking about a text amendment. But again, I, I think uh, what we wanted to convey was that um, the type of use that is self-storage facility today is so different from what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. We wanted just to communicate that to you. Um, JR hopefully did that well. And also the fact that, you know, there's an analysis that's been done that the town of Berlin uh, is currently underserved in, in just in general terms from the need of self storage and looking at a Connecticut average of how many square feet per capita. Uh, and that, you know, there's, it's not even close to the sort of the, the general Connecticut uh, standard of 6.5. Uh, feet per, per person uh, in the state. This is again under one square foot. So uh, if, if uh, and the time is late and, and you're not interested in looking at the plan, just give you a sense as to what the impact of those restrictions would be. I just wanted to assure you that, uh, you know, obviously you know better than I, that your site plan uh, process with a special permit gives you much discretion in terms of the, the layout of, of, of a site. Uh, we wanted to make sure that you understood that there is a, a site that's on our radar. Uh, should this go forward, we will be going forward uh, and uh, hoping to meet all the qualifiers that uh, you might think are appropriate for this type of use. Thank you. Thank you. 
Maureen, do you have comments on this application? Um, I do have a few. Um, again, uh, being towards the end of the public hearing, this was uh, the last item that had uh, less time to be able to afford to them. Um, I, the, Madam Chair, you just uh, hit on one of the items I wanted to remind the uh, Commission of and, and the public at large actually it's always a good reminder to um, help people to understand that text amendments affect the text as depending on where it is in the regulation. So this would affect all properties in the Berlin in the BT2 zone, uh, which is primarily along the Berlin Turnpike. Um, the BT2 zone is uh, um, zone that's fairly limiting and uh, has the same purpose as the BT1 zone as we discussed at the recent public hearing when some uh, when there was a map amendment. However, you know, just to say that it is a unique, uh, or rather the text applies throughout. Um, one of the items I noticed in the text, and, and it is common for an applicant to present uh, a concept as well, as, as most of you want to know, um, if not all. Um, the language uh, they presented, you know, about their business model itself, we want to ensure that the language reflects the potential business model, not one applicant's way of doing business. Um, that, um, so those are the features we want to look at in a regulation that to protect the interests of the town. Um, I do have a question about the property being developed on a minimum lot area of no less than seven acres, uh, realizing that they presented that their uh, acreage in mind uh, that, they, that they targeted, but wondering, um, I, my recollection is from looking at the map when the application first came in, and unfortunately I didn't write it down because now as I said, you not be there to dig in deeper, but there's only a very few properties in the BT2 zone that are of seven acres. Um, but seven acres is a different threshold than we commonly use in our regulations. I believe we have references for four acres, we have references for two acres, um, why seven, and that can be substantiated. You know, I, I don't have an issue with it, just um, whether or not the commission uh, uh, would rather, I, I don't want to influence because it doesn't matter, but whether that is a factor. Um, and that the Berlin Turnpike design standards would, of course, continue to be met in any area that is subject to those as well. So that while they talk about design features, um, there are, is also always for any special permit use, the added threshold of the design standards for lighting, you know, then that includes lighting and signage and uh, materials and all that that you would normally, like landscaping, that you would normally review with a special permit application as well as the um, criteria they've written as well. Oh, and, and the, probably it's in the record, but we did get no apparent conflict from the um, COG, Capital Angel Council of Governments. Was referred, no comment. Um, go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm, my question is uh, do we have any, uh, usually when we have a, a special permit like this or amendment to the zoning, we have picture of all the BT2 zone uh, properties. And, and uh, you know, if it says seven acres or whatever, uh, we want to see what our stock of B2 uh, properties are. And, you know, I don't want to see spot zoning because uh, there's one particular property, seven acres, so, and there's no other properties that can put this property on seven acres, then we're spot zoning. Uh, so, you know, just a, a map from you know, a map there, and which which properties or how many properties uh, this would uh, 
pertain to. And, uh, you know, uh, when we we'll do a little uh, changes in our thing, then, you know, it should uh, take in all the big tools from the uh, properties and the fact to see what we can, you know, what what's the possibility in the property what we do uh, of this proposal. So I'll to partially answer that, that was what I started to look at when the application came in, but I do believe that Chris did a little more deep, a deeper dive into that as well. Am I correct? Okay, I thought he had it as well. There you are. Uh, That's yeah. right there. That's right. Uh, Chris, I'm the department director. Uh, yes, I did take a quick look. Um, it appears that the only other site of uh, BT2 of this uh, seven acres or more was the corner of Deming Road and the Vernon Turnpike, which just was rezoned to BT1. I believe that was the only other one at this point. Um, I know, um, to take a step backward, Economic Development Commission was in favor of this because the, the model has changed dramatically. Um, at present, we allow cell storage in our GI zone, which would be between Murphy Road Recycling and CW Camp. Understandable, um, it's a 1970s model. Um, they would like to be, again, it's the traffic, it's the people. Um, and I appreciate Attorney Senator uh, Jair Clisham uh, coming forward with this because I think the BT2 is, has been a challenging zone for us. If you look, it's the one zone where we've not seen a lot of development. Uh, and the concern that I had too was very much in line uh, with our planner, which was the, okay, if we're saying it's this restricted, is it just for this property? I don't think that is a, a good way to go about it at this point. But at the same time, I think having it in the BT2, which is within, I think, a half mile of the town line of Meriden, if we were to say, where does it make sense? That's where it makes sense. In my mind. It's further down there. Um, it's properties that are very challenging to develop. Um, one, topography. Two, the zoning. Um, three, it is further beyond kind of where a lot of things are going on. One of the things that I looked at briefly was, and, and again, I just throw this out as potential opportunities, which is if, it, let's say hypothetically, it's three and a half acres and 400 feet or something, so that it would be more open to a couple properties instead of just necessarily one property, but it would still live because we want to make sure that this is not done in a two acre site because we want it to still be nice. We don't want it to be a big building with nothing to black top. I, I think the way that, um, Mr. Klishman has done his projects in other towns. It's very green, there's landscaping. Again, without the doors facing the road, it's going to be a very nice uh, product. And I think if it is looked at in a way to maybe there's a middle ground there, which is it's not one, it's not seven. Again, I just sort of three and a half out, it just happens to be half of the seven acres. Um, I, but I think three and a half acres, I think that 90 feet is still very important because we do want to protect residences. Um, I believe, again, I'm going back before my time, but I believe the BT2 was set up specifically for uses that would be more conducive to the residences. So if you look at the BT2, there's no automotive, there's no warehousing, there's no repair. So all the things that would be more negative, if you will, are not in that BT2. So yeah, I think this makes a lot of sense. Again, figuring out what the numbers are and how the tax amendment reads is more of, of what you'll be doing. But from our perspective, economic job, from my own perspective, I think it makes sense. Um, and being able to take it on in a way to partner particularly with Attorney Senator and Mr. Clisham, we can find something that works for us instead of having an onrush of people coming in. Because as I've talked to a couple of the folks in, in other towns, is permits come first, self storage comes second, uh, almost always. And I would rather be on the forefront to say, this is what we're doing, this is where we decided it could go. And maybe that becomes a little more research that Maureen and I do to figure out, okay, great, how many are we talking about if we choose? Three and a half acres to come back to you say it, it may be a combination of properties. It's uh, you know, uh, you know, if it's you know, three acres, maybe they think a combination of two properties in order to make, make the property viable. And we've done that before in the uh, team one zone. Uh, when we went to that 10 acre thing, there yes. was a discussion a little while back, uh, trying to combine properties. Because the properties on Burlington Turnpike are deep, you know, and weird shapes, you know. So something like this may help us uh, get more properties developed by coming up with a number that will combine properties or or 
you know, whatever, the 90 feet, I agree to go to a, a residential property. Uh, you know, but again, with that said, 90 feet, you know, because of the properties on the borough turnpike are so deep, it might, it might avoid development with this idea. Uh, so I think that's just a couple ideas of when you're changing the, the what can be put on any zone. Uh, and I think it's a good idea. I've dealt with storage places for years. And uh, he's right. They've come from, from dumps to <laughs> beautiful buildings. Uh, but uh, so I just need a little bit more information of what we have for land pieces in that P2, P2 and what would be the smart number. And I, I think that's something that, that Maureen and I can take a look at. I, I probably myself more so to take a look and see what's there, both the size wise and the 90 feet, and figure out what is what is viable and go back to the zone. We may not go and get more than one. One self storage. It's, absolutely. And it's, it's good to at least know if you're going to put it in the book, at least know where you're going. Well, you know, it's, it's given the opportunity to other people uh, to develop uh, and you know, the spot zone. You can't just get, uh, you know, it, 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 it is dangerous, and, and, and this commission has uh, made very good decisions over the years. I mean, if you have what was done with the current, that was a good. We did it before because you know you can go buying properties. Well, I mean the, the, the car dealership, we wanted another Home Depot Plaza, which was 20 acre minimum. At the time, you would have to work with five property owners to spend about 15 million dollars. Where again, we made it a five acre minimum, and I believe when John is done, he's going to spend over 20 million dollars, which has dramatically changed it. And, and not to say this is the same thing, but it's this, it, it's the idea of being creative. So I think yes, we can come back and have to work directly with the applicants. Um, Commissioner what, Rogan. What it looks like and how we were talking about. Yeah. Commissioner Rogan. Uh, I just have a few comments, questions. I want to. Uh, Brian, kind of. Please, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, lean into your microphone so we can hear you better, please. Yeah. All right. Uh, is that any better? Not really. Oh, well, let me try. We can hear you. Just we'll be quiet. We'll get to the IT part tomorrow. And we'll be quiet. Go ahead, Brian. Is that any better? We can hear you barely. Now you're muted. If you're speaking, we cannot hear you at all now. Is that any better? This is now we can at least hear the voice. Okay. Not well, but we can hear you. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on today. I seem to be getting off on service. Um, I'll, I'll try talking loudly then. I want to get back to the language of the text amendment. Um, there's a few things that kind of just stuck out to me when I see the word. I, I like the idea of uh, architectural features. I don't really know if I want to see a tower, but that really brings to seeing the word tower kind of brings to mind what are the height restrictions on buildings like this. Um, I do understand the size of the property. Seven acres is a bit obscure. It doesn't really match any of our other, uh, uh, some of our other regulations like Maureen was saying. So I, I would agree with going down to four. Um, I think that'd be more appropriate. But now that we're talking about that size of land um, and talking about a very big building. Um, I was wondering about percentages of a bulk table. And I mean, when I think about a big, big building that is for storage, um, I just think about what I've seen before and they are pretty bland. Um, I understand you want to spruce it up with like, you know, hardy board or stuff like that. Maybe there could be some of those uh, criteria put into this regulation as well as I think when we talk about setbacks and everything, I think that a landscape buffer, even on the turnpike to kind of help break up a big building would be appropriate as well as during uh, on the residential setbacks, even in 90 feet. Um, if it's 90 foot setback and there's nothing buffering it, then you just have 90 feet of grass. I think that we should consider that all that should be buffered as well. Um, and yeah, so height buffer, um, and I'd be curious about some bulk 
bulk tables out of curiosity, um, as well as a design, you know, a basic design guideline. Uh, those are my comments. Thank you, Brian. Um, Jim, you have any other questions, comments, thoughts to share? No, I think Brian hit them all. <laughs> okay, Mary. So I would just add that what I've been sharing on the screen is um, the main BT2 um, section that uh, the zone right now we do, as Chris mentioned, the other BT2 section of zoning is up in the Deming Road area and is now along Deming Road because you just rezoned the corner itself. So it's the east side of Deming, east south side of Deming Road, east of the Road Turnpike, that is BT2, and this area here um, okay. that is shared on the screen now. Um, and as uh, Mr. Zigma mentioned, that, and, and where we have uh, acreage criteria added to the regulations, it, it has often been designed to compile properties together. Yeah. If you yes. want me to share any of the bulk information, um, I can now. Or no, I think that's. You still have homework to do on this, right? Yeah. Uh, well, at your direction, and I heard that I do, as far as coming up with a map showing you that available property. Yeah, I think I think probably um, the community myself should put together the bulk information. I can get together some of the. I wrote, I wrote that little list of properties to take a look at. We can get that back to you, and then maybe on a map you can see what we have, and then some of the properties we're talking about. If we set it at certain levels, and if we can take a look at that and work directly with the applicant and see if we can find something that makes sense. Makes and, and look at the frontage as well so that it's not unique to the single yeah, property so or a single yeah. combination that's kind of boxed in. I think we need some due diligence so we know what potential is available before we can try and make a decision as to what size limitations we might want to put on. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that makes perfect sense. Uh, just for reference, um, maximum building height in the BT2 zone is four stories or 35 feet. Um, and the impervious surface coverage is 80% general regulations with the I think the, the two main the building coverage at is 25 percent we will have more to do okay so uh, this is public hearing and we do have others in the audience does anybody want to speak either in favor of or opposition to this application <laughs> okay um Hearing none, uh, is there a motion to continue this? I'll make a motion to continue. Joan, can I accept your motion as a second? Uh, sure. Okay, so uh, the motion by Tim Sigma, seconded by Joan Bealey. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Tim? Aye. Aye. Okay, so uh, it'll be continued to the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Next on the agenda, thank you for your patience. Item E, subdivision application of Paul Fryer Jr. for a two lot subdivision at Zero Heritage Drive, lot 15K, block 17. Welcome. We're getting warmed up. Ready for Yes. For the record, today, our Reset to me the presentation so that I could have it she immediately she today. Says she's already to go. So she's got I to claim go. I am all ready to go with the presentation for this one. I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Mark Bobet. Did she call offices in Plantville? Paul uh, Pye Jr. is here. He's the applicant for this project. Uh, hopefully, this is a relatively simple. Good old fashioned subdivision. I know you guys haven't seen a lot of it, but this is located at the end of Heritage Drive. For those of you who want to quickly remember where Heritage Drive is, it's your first right south of the fire station, south of the fire station, going about a half a mile 
And this is a piece of property that lies on the northerly side. It was originally owned by Hella Tricker. Joe Tricker was the original developer back in the late 80s, I believe. Uh, I was actually involved in that subdivision. Uh, this is bounded by CLMPs that pull line transmission line running to the north. And it's a gas transmission line, actually two gas transmission lines that run along the south piece of property. So this piece was left undeveloped as part of the subdivision, basically our property. The developer had an idea that maybe you could do five or six lots in that. He was told no way. He decided to leave it to a later time. Well, 35 years later, and being on the market forever and ever, uh, this is what's left. It's a 13.3 acre piece of property located in already six zone. Uh, at the present time, Heritage Drive kind of comes to this location here, and it's the end of the 30 foot pavement. Uh, Chippins Hill is just off to the south, and it comes through. There are two houses located on both sides, both those driveways kind of merge and Y at the end. Probably combine those driveways. The merger of probably about 14, 15 feet wide, but the 30 foot pavement stops in this location. Uh, what Mr. Pryor would like to do is develop two building lots for his family, himself, and his daughter. I think uh, this lot and this location is about five acres. This lot's about 7.8 acres. What we're proposing is to take the roadway, and the town has fee interest strip that runs through and across the gas company at the present time. Sometimes Mr. Tricka and one of his potential buyers kind of built a laneway across so they could get across and did a little bit of clearing back in there. We intend to build that road through the right of way about 200 feet and then they extend it about 300 feet so we've got adequate frontage for this lot. Maybe possibly sometime, we don't know, but we made provision for it. There's potential for a third lot to be split there. We're not living on now, but we've got adequate frontage along that building line to provide for two lots. But we're just keeping this at 7.8 acres at the present time. Uh, again, we're crossing the Algonquin. The, what was the Algonquin gas transmission line? I don't know who the formal entity is now, but we designed this. We've had the original profiles for Heritage Drive, and we've kind of continued that original design up to this point where we're not cutting, we're actually filling over the gas right away, so we're not cutting any depth, and we're going to uh, pass their muster when they get involved further with this, and then we're coming down to a cul-de-sac to drop down. Uh, the cul-de-sac is going to have two catch basins located down at the bottom, end. it'll be a permanent cul-de-sac. It'll drain into what we're calling a stormwater management area, even though we're showing it in light blue, it's really a dry area. But the intent is to kind of let that water diffuse into a collection area and then diffuse over level spreader so it kind of naturally flows down the bank and away from the two building lots. Uh, there's also a second pipe that's located in this vicinity of this church is there. Uh, this area here is kind of wet. There's, there's pudding drains and stuff that pump out of this house and it created a little wet pocket. Number one, because the driveway across here kind of blocks the flow. I believe there's a small pipe in there. So we're going to formalize that with a flare end on one side and discharge it across. It's not going to connect into the road system, but it'll be a separate system and it'll all flow into that area. Again, dry 99% of the time is going during rainfall. It'll have a storage capacity of about 100,000 cubic feet of storage which incidentally is the difference between the 100 year storm pre and post. So we're not gonna add any more water leaving the site than presently happens. We're showing two typical house sites. Those house sites are intended to kind of follow the natural contours, even though we're showing a lot of clearing, the clearing is probably more exaggerated than it is, but basically those houses are gonna be down about seven or eight feet below the cul-de-sac. So you can imagine those houses set back uh, one of the comments, but the only comment we got from town staff so far is that the driveways for these two units, because they're uh, 150 feet further back from the cul-de-sac requires 
a uh, wearable area of uh, 18 feet. So we're going to extend the shoulders and have those deeper because those houses are uh, 150 feet back. We are proposing sanitary systems and on site wells. We have had the Central Connecticut Health District out there. They reviewed it. They believe they have no comments on the plan, but we'd have to go through them and make sure everything is copacetic before we. Uh, we uh, get our bill improvements, obviously. We are asking for open space and fee in lieu of instead of a dedication of open space with 13.3 acres, at least about 1.3 acres we'd have to give up for open space. And there really is no area around here about their open space, continuous open space. So it doesn't make much sense to cut away 1.3 acres someplace and create open space. So we would ask the commission to allow us to appear of the Lua. I should note there is one small portion of this area above the right of way that was cut out for this lot because they had some issues with their septic system. So their septic system was rebuilt in that location. But that's pretty much the entire north side of the uh, of the property as it stood. Uh, once completed, we'd have a permanent cul-de-sac. We are asking also for waiver. As I mentioned, this thing was done in the late 80s. So the Road pavements are 30 feet, the right of ways are 50 feet. So what we're proposing is to start in this location and so it's just sit down to a 26 foot pavement and build the pavement to the location that still allows for garbage trucks, fire trucks, school buses to turn around or now if they come down here, they'd have to back up on uh, Chip and So Road. So it allows uh, the town emergency vehicles and such to pass through there. We're also asking for a waiver to allow our right of way in this area to be 50 feet instead of 60 feet. Again, it's a small section. It kind of matches up with the original subdivision. Uh, and there's, you know, otherwise, you know, you just have 10 more feet of uh, non taxable property. We are showing street trees here, even though they're not showing this plan, we are showing street trees located off of this area. And other than the storm drainage and uh, buried underground utilities like water or sorry, electric cable. And I don't think there's gas out there. Uh, there'd be no other utilities in the road. So it would be a fairly simple construction. We are not asking for sidewalks. There are no sidewalks in the area, in this case, Kim. And there's no reason for the piece of the puzzle to be done. No, there's a puzzle there now. So, uh, and again, the intent here is for the developer to own the property. So he's not looking to go through a clear cut. He likes the big lots. He likes the buffer. He likes being secluded. So there's really no issue with you know creating open space or easements. And again, if we put an easement on this point, the system covers this piece of property for potential subdivision. So we'd ask the commission just do a simple fee in lieu of for open space and uh, but the uh, property owners enjoy their uh, nice secluded separated piece of property as it's. And that's what we have to say. Thank you, Bart. <laughs> um, my initial um, thought when I first, um, when I look at the plan is the parallel driveways and how close they are to each other when they come to the cul-de-sac. And um, I'm just wondering if um, there's a, like a plan to sort of soften the entrance um, to the driveways or that, it just seems to me like it would be kind of visually stark um, from the cul-de-sac with that straight shot and the parallel driveways. Right, it's, it is typical. So there may be some variation on where those driveways are, but the reason we showed it there is because we are dropping from this location down to this location. So we felt showing Phil in this general location was better than having to show Phil here, Phil here and mm -hmm. around here and try to keep it down. I mean, I don't think we've decided on final driveway locations, but that's a comment the commission wants to make. And I'm sure the landscape is pretty extensive. Again, we've kind of exaggerated the amount of clearing here. Uh, I'm sure by the time you get landscaping and stuff in here, this thing is going to look like it's been tucked in the woods for a long, long time. Commissioner Rogan, can you guys hear me? All right. 
I'm just looking at the retention pond and it's right on the property line, which is right next to the gas line. It's all very open. And I know that they can't be the most appealing things to look at. I was wondering if there could be either a little bit of, uh, you know, push it back and maybe change the shape of it a little bit or just do some landscape buffering so that it's not so um, visible from the neighboring property. Yeah, there is a buffer here, even though we don't show it, but we can kind of uh, show that buffer and narrow that down a little bit to make that kind of fit the site a little bit better. Again, there is kind of a natural tree line here. So if we keep that tree line, uh, there's a lot of brush and stuff that's developed in that area. And I think to, to us, this is the least obtrusive area of everything, but we can work around that and work on that shape a little bit and create a uh, buffer to the property itself. Yeah. yeah. Would, it, would it be really the <laughs> purpose of uh, putting a full cul-de-sac there or, or putting a hammerhead there? We, lo I, we looked at many options. Again, this on the Southern Division plan was not a little plan. Right. All right. So Paul originally was looking at this at one lot. Now, our only issue was going to be it's not to the rear of our lots. We need to get a variance for that. But then we thought, thought about a hammerhead. We talked about a hammerhead and some other means to turn around. We did we did need the, the frontage to make these lots work. And when the idea of a third lot came in here, if we ever put a hammerhead in here, we would not have the frontage for that. So this kind of kept all of our options open. The hammerhead really didn't really subtract the amount of pavement that you would think because we'd have to make those radius big enough we got to be able to back a fire truck or some other larger vehicle plowing those areas so uh, we did think about it okay all right well, Paul Price. can I just quickly provide a little background so that we can lay out where some of the plan came from sure so this lot was a uh, ended up being a tax sale different owner at the time it's transferred since. However, um, once it got put on that tax list, the questions were coming in and multitudes for what could be done with it, et cetera. So staff, engineering, uh, public works, um, myself, fire marshal, you know, we sat down to look at um, not only what the subdivision regulations say, but what the criteria for the roads were. And we, you know, I crafted with the help of primarily the director of public works, um, outline for anyone potentially interested in the property. And basically, I actually think it was not thought, um, written as a, um, not a building lot, unlike we've had that on some plans where that phase was written as not a building lot. This was just like left as a lot, but not defined as not a building lot. So we determined that it could build, one house could be built there and would have to meet certain driveway criteria to get in. The um, Heritage Drive actually does, as I believe um, Mr. Bove um, explained, the Heritage Drive right of way does come right up to that property and dead ends. Um, the right of way is there, the two houses on either side their driveways, it looks like a drive, driveway that splits, but it is in fact right of way. And um, it was determined at that time, and that was written back in 2019, um, that the finalized in March of 2020, that the um, and any additional lots besides one, one would have to come in for subdivision approval because this is was at one time part of that bigger parcels of Heritage Drive um, and what would have been, I think, phase four, maybe phase three or phase four, I think it was phase four, um, and would have to extend the road in accordance with the design that would be approvable by Public Works for a road and plows to go down it and everything else. We have this Heritage Drive subdivision, it's fairly old, um, but only in the recent past, has the road actually been accepted by the town and transferred to us? So we didn't want to recreate that issue either by having 
um, one of the big hurdles that I think we worked with with any of the applicants that came in to look at the property initially was um, their big hurdle being the crossing of the gas line. Oh, I have more comments directly related to should you decide to approve, but I wanted to provide that approval. So the road size and the cul-de-sac was part of what the direction for any applicant. I'm Paul Pryor, 50 Quincy Trail. Hi. So a couple of comments. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, but could you speak into the microphone for the record, please? Yes. So a couple of the comments right there with the um, barriers and um, no, there's woods right in here. Retention, um, yeah, there are like wooded areas, so you, like right now, you can't see the house. And I do plan the neighboring house, the neighboring yes. house, you can't see it. I do plan on uh putting like maybe like a berm, like with some white pines and some spruces in there. That was my plan. And your, your thought with the driveways, yes, yeah, I agree 100%. So yeah, I have I have neighbors with a, a driveway parallel like that, and no. the houses are beautiful, but the driveway just takes away so much. No, I think the driveway, you know, come with something you know, like a little curve. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. This is for myself and you know my daughter, so it's not going to be for us. <laughs> We're going to make it very nice. Do you have any, anybody else have any questions? Um, I'm not sure we're going to ask. Very, very nice piece of property. Yeah. So, so, is there any intention to make the third one as well? What's that? Is there an intention to make a third building lot as well? As if there would, building? it would be for my son. I have two kids. My daughter would probably be the first one, though she's older. My son, if he. And that would probably be yeah. 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 So um, I see that uh, somebody has joined us, um, and uh, so we are in public hearing. Um, this is um, the time to have an opportunity to either speak in favor of or opposition to this application. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak to the commission on this application? Okay. Um, commissioners, any questions? No, I'm I'm good, Diane. Thank you. I'm good, thank you. I'm all set unless Maureen has anything she would like to add. Okay. Thanks, guys. She does. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so just to comment on the waivers requested, um, two lots, the waiver for fee and blow up is you know, provided for in the regulation. Um, the um, road width, um, the town engineer and I did go through this plan and he uh, also apologized for not having written comments. So he and I, um, both, um, I have this problem. Um, he's fine with that. He thinks that's consistent with the things as design is consistent with the road as built and makes sense to not change the road width and make it wider and inconsistencies. Um, there is no um, plan for sidewalks in that area. It doesn't make sense. The neighborhood does not have sidewalks. It's a more rural, rural area. So public works agrees with that as well. Um, we do have the question as well as the condition um, to recommend that we didn't find street lights on the plan. Um, there are, um, let's use the term, well-spaced street lights. We don't have a standard for that um, for the um, placement type, depending on some some towns will have um, criteria and standards for each type of road. Um, but the town um, planner of the town engineer and I suggest that the street lights be provided um, consistent with the rest of the road. And that may only be one down towards this cul-de-sac, but work with 
him and I to uh, determine the location of uh, the appropriate streetlight numbers. And you know, the town took over streetlights a few years back from Eversource. Eversource used to own all our streetlights. Now the town owns our streetlights. So the standards they have is a transfer to us. So that's where the a little bit of um, need for staff discussion comes in. We need to be able to look at that. Um, and that the really the, the main criteria um, or condition that uh, I pretty feel strongly about is confirmation that permitting has been obtained for the construction through the easement, the gas line, prior to disturbance of the area and prior to any um, permitting, including the encroachment permit or any building permits, so that we don't end up with houses or other work that is completed and then the gas line, um, the gas company has a sub of the house, you can fix it. So we want that um, written authorization um, provided to the town planner and the director of public works. I had a or disturbance within that area. If I can comment on that, we have contact with the gas company that have given us their requirements. We have met their requirements. What they've told us is to get your local approval, and then we'll go out and do test pits. We'll verify the gas and then we can start building. So we will work with the town to do that. But we have contact with the gas company. Think a little deeper. They are aware. And we do know that they, they allow crossings. So, I mean, it's not as though you have a gas line. Drive over them all the time. The gas line runs the length of the statement, right? <laughs> but, but we don't want so liability of an applicant putting in investment in infrastructure when we may end up with a shell or something. Access for a couple of years. And we've got no problem. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we will work on modifying that area at that time if they don't get a bigger call for the fall and work on the experiment. Right now, the can't see the houses in the office at all because there's probably about 50 feet, maybe even 60, but 50 feet of woods that's going to lead there. I, I want the buck. I don't, I don't want to see, you know, not that I don't want to see them, but. Your privacy. It sounds by the description that Bart provided also that it's really just going to be a naturalized area to kind of catch whatever big storm there is. So it's not going to always be wet. Right. Can I just add to that that um, the way drawn on the rendering, um, which obviously doesn't have all the details on it, the Wooded area that's primarily discussed is within the uh, gas line area. I'm pulling that up on the screen now, which I'm trying to see. So this is would be the gas line width. Um, it's yes. a little off because of gas right away with easement area. Um, obviously, the GIS is a little bit off because the house is at the end of the cul-de-sac to not encroach into the easement. So it's as with the GIS, typical of GIS system, um, it's altered a bit, but the placement of the detention area is fairly close to Mr. Pryor's property line. Um, and so that buffering is actually mostly on lot 1510. Second line came through. At least 40 years ago, second line came through. So there's, there's uh, two lines going through there, but uh, uh, and they came through all the way down by Jones' property. Uh, but the, the lines came through there at least 40 years ago. Yeah, that, that immediate tree line is kind of along the property. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, but yeah. one's gotten most of it right away. Clean down. They did a clean yeah. job. Yeah. So, flying over when you mostly do. So, in reality, that detention pond, yeah. in order to keep the trees actually we'll, we'll being pushed north on the lot. I don't think the second line did the pond push, which is 
No, just just a question for my for myself as to how this how this works. So does the street portion have to go in before the houses get done or is it all done at once or how does how does that we would probably put most of the road for access because the site there's a bonding mechanism that we have to keep I think it's 25 percent for the value of the pre-development so we probably reach that 25 percent and then go in and post the bond and they couldn't get a CL until the the bond or the road was completed to find the satisfaction of the bonding and the design of the plan. I just wasn't sure how that worked. So. It's a good thing I didn't know about the film. <laughs> okay, I so I think they were love that piece. And you will want you will want a street light up there. So we'll, we'll work with that. Yeah, it's somewhere with within there, but you maybe want like the lower ones, not like the big 40 footers. Yeah, because that's going to have too much. Yeah, this small. You'll probably have your neighbors complain if it's too. Yeah. But you want a little something just for. Yeah. Yeah. People go on the street side. <laughs> okay. Um, commissioners uh, joining us remotely. Any questions, comments? No, I think you guys covered everything. So I'm set. I'm all set. Um, this is a public hearing. Last chance, I think, for public comments. For the record, I want to um, add the wetlands comment that they request a statement from the soil test. Scientists stating no regulated areas within 50 feet of all property boundaries. Thank you. We haven't already done it. We will, but we, we put off the map on the sure. okay. picture. I think everyone's fairly confident. It's yeah. just a matter of that needs to be part of that record. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think last chance, last call for public comment. Oh man, I got a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Ah, uh, second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, those in favor of closing the hearing? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, now we're moving on to old business. And um, Maida, do we want to? Um, you're going to work with. Uh, I'm wondering if we should move them up on the agenda for. Back in the room. Nobody else is here. <laughs> Back to the room, okay? I don't know who's here. Um, is there anybody opposed? I don't think there's any problem with you changing your second. Second. If you want to do nothing else this way, decide to deliberate in this order, and you can. You can make that motion. Yeah, is there any opposition from the commission to move? Discussion of Paul, uh, the application for subdivision for Paul Fryer off on the agenda. No. Oh. I have yes. a motion from Tim no. to do that. <laughs> Seconded. Um, those in favor? Aye. Yeah, aye. 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 Okay, so um, we will uh, do our deliberation then on the subdivision application of Paul Fryer Jr. For a two lot subdivision at zero heritage drive lot 15k block 17. Okay. Um well I don't have any questions, so I guess I'll just go into a motion if I get it right. And I don't know if I'm sitting here going, oh my god. All right, so motion to accept uh, or to approve. Of the subdivision, uh, let me see. We have a waiver and fee. We have the waiver for the fee in lieu of the open space. We don't have any sidewalks, and then everything else Maureen has in her notes. That's my motion. I would like to second the motion. Second. 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 Second.
uh, to approve the application. Um, those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for moving us up, too. Okay, you're welcome. Welcome <laughs> to the neighborhood. Thank you. Yeah, look who we got for neighbor. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. Gentlemen, have a great night. Thank you. No cheese. Okay, um, let's get back on track with our agenda. Old business, item A, special permit site plan applications of Shuttle Meadow Development, LLC, for multifamily development at 309 Main Street, East Berlin. All right, I'm digging through my notes here, and um, I think that everything everything we needed to address was addressed. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and you know I think I think it's going to be a very nice subdivision. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve, and with uh, staff comments because I know she had some. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay so. Um, so we have a motion to approve subject to staff comments. Were you done with your motion, Joe? Yeah, I think that's, okay. uh, yeah, I'm pretty spent. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, discussion? Yes. Uh, Keep it short. Yeah, please, Tim. I'm fading fast. Yeah, we have. Uh, I don't feel good uh, right. <laughs> fighting this head cold. That's uh, part of part of the the same review. Plus. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I have a question. Can we? I mean, we we did it in the in downtown area that uh, we have a standard of uh, of type of siding and stuff to put on. on downtown when we uh, went over the siding stuff, we voted for the Hardy Fork stuff uh, or similar. And uh, my, my thing is that the development is closed into uh, single family residential uh, historical road uh, should uh, be similar to what the historical road has. Most of it's all old clapboard, hardboard, clapboard uh, type thing. Uh, so I, I have, I think some of it would be good. I just was worried about the quality of the siding, what it looks like. I, mean, I would like to see that we say that it's hardboard or similar to hardboard. Yeah, I, I think the applicant was talking about that during the presentation. Because well, he, brought... he said he would like to use Hardy Board, but uh, the expense was a little high. Uh, well, it's going to be but... hard to get the supplies, too. I'm worried. I'm worried about. Uh... Uh, Commissioner, is, it, is that oh, the shuttle metal? Is... No, it's, a, it's in East Berlin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are we doing the yeah East the Carolina? shuttle metal development? Yeah, the shuttle metal development on three three hundred nine East Main Street on Main Street in East Berlin. We're under uh, old okay. business. Yep, yep, okay. Yep, 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 yep. All right. No problem. I, I know you're sick too. So. <laughs> yeah. Too many shuttle metals out there. I know. What the heck? Uh -huh. But um. Yeah. So um, um, with respect to the siding, he did commit to the Hardy Board for the front house that would be renovated. Yeah, but and not I think for any other part of it. Um, right. As a point of helpfulness, I guess, from motions and approvals over the years, um, I think the commission has in the past said um, final building materials to be reviewed with staff. And um, I certainly. When I have a concern, if that's where the discussion item at the end of the meeting comes in so many nights is I bring it to you to, to determine it. That is okay. And you had. Um, so if uh, given the plate of uh, building materials supply at this point and the evolution of different materials coming out on a regular basis as well, 
um, that may be an option, particularly since um, this wasn't really debated during the public hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, they had a good response. You know, you asked, you gave a general answer. So, well, he, he did give us a general answer, but he didn't commit. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, Diane, I Diane, I'll. Find, you know, one way or the other, but I know I've seen it. Well, I think it's yeah. it put in there that you know the materials are to be approved by you know by staff. I think we tr obviously trust that you guys are going to do the right thing there. I mean, they did change the wood fence to vinyl fence. I think they're trying to be a good neighbor there. So I think if we put it in there as far as the materials that way, that would kind of cover us and the concerns I think Ted has on that. Materials as discussed, perhaps as well, too. Yes. Tie it to right. the Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's going to require all of it. My motion. Um, Thank you, John. Um, Madam Chair, I've second. amended my. Yeah, Thank you, okay. Brian. Let's move it. Let's get these people okay. home. Okay, <laughs> just for the record, because there's been conversation here. Um, Joan and Brian are amending their motions to include that verbiage. <laughs> as far you as got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's what she said. Okay, um, any other discussion? No. Nope. Th those in favor? Aye. 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 That's all right. That's all right. Motion carries. And uh, next on the agenda, uh, special permit applications and unified site plan of Sebastian Malaspini for properties at 202 through 212 Mill Street, map 10 3, block 86, lots 5 and 5A in the CCD zone, CCD 2 zone. Um, is that the one that was continued? That, that was continued. Yeah, we continue. Oh, yep. yep. Uh, next item on the agenda, agenda, item C, proposed text amendment to the zoning regulations of Robert Rossi to add automotive appearance enhancement service use for automobiles, motorcycles, and pickup trucks. I'll make um, the motion to approve. Oh. Wow. There, wow, there you go, Brian, stirring it up. I'll do your second. I'll second. Hey! <laughs> I can't even see. I can't even see you guys. How do I know you're there? <laughs> okay, who was my second? Was it Steve or Joan? Joan. Joan. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a motion to approve. Um, any discussion? Okay. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Come on, guys, liven up. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> carries. Um, item D, proposed amendment to the zoning regulations, attorney Dennis Sanaviva. Uh, that was continued. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we move on then um, on the agenda for the commission business, um, discussion and direction to staff regarding regulations relating to 2021 legislation uh, regarding so I if you don't mind, I do want to point out she sent an email to all the members today. Um towards the end of the day, did everyone get it? If, um, I did not see I, it. I did not see it yet. Okay, she is also supposed to be getting on. She I am here. Oh, I'm here. Oh, now. I didn't see you. <laughs> so um, I think okay. the intent is to, oh, she's on the, I, do you have a different label of who you are? I don't know. I don't I, know what label I have. I couldn't get in through the link, so I, I, I don't know what I did. I know what Your I name did. is Michael. <laughs> Oh really? It could be. Yeah, it could a, be under one of my other Michael. accounts. That's all right. We'll I'm call sorry. you Michelle. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about so, that. Um, the the hope of staff and uh, council is a couple of minutes, very very brief. What is going on right now that we need to deal with? Um, because staff needs to start working. Is focusing very hard on getting some language written at the commission's discretion. 
uh, to direction. So if you don't mind, no. Jennifer will take We're all in the conversation. Let's do it. So, so for cannabis, first off, um, part, part of what I sent you today um, was uh, I attached was Public Act 22-103. Um, it amended the Recreational Cannabis Act. Um, it, so I am going to need to kind of update you on that. I know it's been a long time since you had your combined meeting with town council. Um, so my first question to you on that is, do you think you need a refresher on that? And I know, you know, you have new members. Do you want to refresh on cannabis before we start inviting people to come and speak to you? I wouldn't mind a refresh. Okay. I wouldn't mind a refresher, but not tonight. Yes. No, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I can't no, no, do it no, tonight. Not tonight. Cause, cause I could talk fast, but not that fast. No. Um, so, uh, okay, so that's number one. Um, number two uh, on that is something that I've done in uh, a couple other towns is I have invited um, owners of cannabis establishments, uh, you know, businesses, so prospective, uh, you know, business owners um, in to, to talk about uh, the business itself, like the daily operations, because I think it's a good educational thing to have an understanding of, uh, like I had uh, somebody in uh, to North Haven and East Haven who uh, runs currently a medicinal dispensary that's going to be switching over um, the dispensary to hybrid. Um, and uh, it, 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 I found it to be uh, very helpful just to kind of understand the day-to-day -day operations. So that's one thing that we can do. Um, also, um, we can line up um, some town departments, um, you know, some officials, whether you want to hear, hear from, you know, your, your police chief or your fire chief or, um, and, and certainly your health district. Um, so you don't necessarily have to answer me tonight. I think you could think about that. Um, so I think what we plan on for that is, um, because I have to go th through with you anyway, uh, that the original legislation was 303 pages long. And, uh, what I sent you today is another 54. So, oh, um, yeah, so I gotta, I, I think what we'll do maybe for your next meeting is, you know, and I'll, and I'll try to do it in like 20 minutes or so, but just kind of give you a refresher. Um, and I'll send out, you know, I'll send out the link again for the new members. I'll send out the link to the act and, and, uh, you know, the related materials on that as well. So, um, with the last two items, as you know, um, the way uh, those items presented was in some opt-out legislation contained in um, Public Act 21-29. Um, it does require a uh, two thirds vote um, by planning and zoning as well as the legislative body of the town. So the town council to opt out of the legislation. Um, it's been some months since we talked about the accessory apartment um, ADU issue. Um, I do have a summary of the legislation. I can provide you that uh, before your next meeting. And again, on that, what we're looking for is direction on whether or not um, you want to start the opt-out process um, mm -hmm. because it is it is a process that needs to be repeated again. I'm sorry for the clock chiming in the back. No, um, that's okay. But um, uh, it, you know, we need to, we need to follow the process and it involves a public hearing. Um, we need to follow the process at both the commission level and the town council level, and it has to be completed, uh, by January 1st. So, um, you know, if there's a desire to opt out, we really should start to kind of get that going. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll get, again, I think the next meeting, I'll give you a refresher on it. Um, the components of it, but I do have a good summary that I've comprised uh, that I could send around in a memo format. Um, and, you know, we could have a brief discussion about that at your next meeting as well. And that's really all I have to say. Okay. So that was pretty good. That was four minutes. That, really? was, that, that was excellent. That was excellent. <laughs> all right.
we can look forward so, to talking about all of that stuff next time around. Or great. So, and I hope those of you that don't feel well feel better soon. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you very so much. Good. Okay. Thank all you. Right. All right. Reminder that next Thursday oh. is the POCD meeting scheduled for six o'clock. You'll get that invitation as soon as I get back on Zoom and send that out. Um, Francisco supplied me with the summary of it, I believe, today. I think that was in one of the last emails that came in. I know it was coming up. I couldn't remember if it was Tuesday or Thursday. So we're so. trying to be consistent on Thursday. I've also secured rooms for June um, community workshop and the topic meetings that we'll, we'll talk about it all, but generally it won't be a general POCB meeting at this point scheduled for June. It'll be these topics instead of their small meetings. So just so that everybody knows that, um, can get it ahead on their calendar. Um, but we'll be sending that out as soon as I can. I have to do VBA packages. Yeah, so. oh, you'll get it when, as soon as I can. <laughs> and I think that's, I think I've hit it off. All right. Okay. It's not, and it's not 11 o'clock yet. And I am oh, very congratulations. Sorry, Gary, I'm very sorry that the video, I probably would have had to shut the machine back down again. And again, I would have used the machine. No, no. Well, we'll, we'll work through it. Felt. Diane, you did a great job. So, so I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Uh, Joan got the motion to adjourn. Tim seconded. I'll All second. those in favor? Uh, <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll see you Good night. Good night. Everybody feel better, right. everybody. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night.